Welcome to Iron Man Vittoria Gestez. The name alone tells you a lot about the place, with Vittoria coming from the Spanish influence and Gestez from the Basque country. We are located in the northwestern Pyrenees, straddling the border between France and Spain on the coast of the Bay of Biscay. Vittoria Gestez is the capital of the Basque country and the province of Oliva in northern Spain. The Basque country is an autonomous community within Spain, and you'll see the residents beaming with pride flying their Basque country flag. Consistently ranked one of the top five places to live in Spain. Uh, our local hosts here, our hosts are rich in culture, architecture, renowned wineries, and the old town has some of the best preserved medieval streets and plazas in the region, and it is one of the few cities with two cathedrals. This will be the 11th race in the Ironman Pro Series and the fourth Ironman race. 5,000 points go to the pro male and female winners. Today's prize purse is $125,000. Cha-ching! Well, yeah. <laughs> we have a strong field of approximately 80 professional athletes. Sam Laidlow, our 2023 VinFast Ironman World Champion, headlines the men's field, making his pro series debut. 2023 Vittoria Gastez champion Grutz Frades headlines a strong women's field. That's right. And let's take a quick look at what the athletes will face in terms of weather. Right now, it's a cool start to the morning, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 13 degrees Celsius. The wind light a one kilometer per hour. The humidity uh, going to be the big story of the day. It's at 95 percent. So thanks to our friends at Roca uh, for bringing us today's race weather. We will keep you abreast of developments in the weather. Welcome into studio. My name is Dee Dee Griesbauer, and I'm sitting alongside Ironman champion and 13-time 70.3 champion Joe Gambles. Joe, with so many in the pros, so many pros in today's field, looking to both move up the points ranking in the pro series, as well as quite a few looking to secure a qualifying slot to their world championship event. How do you see the race playing out today? Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one, Dee Dee. Uh, yeah, as you said, some athletes are trying to get the last chance to get their qualifying for world championships, either in Nice for the women's or in back in Kona for the men's. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, Lalo needs to validate uh, his spot, so that's important that he finishes today. Uh, no doubt he'll be going for the win, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, it's a real mix field and some really great athletes out there, and we're going to have some great racing. It's definitely going to influence who's super aggressive and trying to get their slot, but also be conservative because you still need to finish the race, and as we know in the Pro Series, every second matters. Let's take a look, Joe, at our course that is on tap for today as we look at our Roka a swim course. It is one lap as always, uh, 3.8 kilometers or 2.4 miles. The swim takes place in the beautiful uh, Ulibari Gamboa Lake located in the Landa Provincial Park outside Victoria Gestes. Athletes will swim counterclockwise one lap in what is drinking quality water with a very short run into transition. Yeah, after that short run into transition, they'll tackle the full gas bike course. So it's a three loop course, 180.2 kilometers or 112 miles. There's two large loops of 74 kilometers and one smaller loop of 32. The full, ba full gas bike course truly showcases the beauty of the region of Victoria Gastez and takes athlete athletes through the most scenic towns of the Alva region and even shares a section with the Camino de, de Santiago. The elevation gain is 1,000 meters. That's right. And of course, then we will take to our Hoka run course. And Joe, this course is a fan favorite. It is four loops, 42.2 kilometers or 26.2 miles. As always, it is flat and fast. Look for the runners to do very, very well and post some fast times. The Hoka run course is flat along the wonderful city center of Victoria Gestes, uh, completely crowded with fans cheering on every single athlete. And the finish line is located in the Plaza España. Each loop is 10 five kilometers through the historic city center. Lots of turns. So the athletes talking a little bit about how many 180s and twists and turns in the course, uh, but no doubt they're going to have a tremendous amount of support out there from our crazy fans here in Victoria Gestes. Yeah, from that graphic, that's uh, definitely a lot of turns there, Didi. So, but um, amazing crowd support out there, I'm sure. So I'm sure they'll be excited to hit the run course out there around Victoria Gastez. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about the updated Ironman Pro Series for the pro men in the top 10 point standings. Updates uh, through the last couple of weeks of racing. Matt Hansen stays atop the list uh, with some of our big uh, movers. Paul Schuster moving up eight spots. Um, Patrick Lange dropped 
dropping down one. Chris Leiferman dropping down one. Clement Mignon being our biggest mover on the week, up 18 slots uh, to number eight. Yeah, and then uh, we've also got Nick Thompson, uh, Marco down, down the two. They've actually dropped down out of the top 10. So Lalo's making his Pro Series debut. Uh, so he could get right in the mix with a strong race today, DD. Um, so we've got a few uh, athletes to watch out for. We've got uh, Robert uh, Vilkovetsky, uh, who's 84th in the point standing. And if he has a good outing today, he'll be back in the mix. So uh, there's definitely a few guys to watch in the men's side. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Christian Hogenhag, another one to move, looking to move up and uh, Antonio Benito Lopez looking to put himself in good position. Again, let's talk a little bit, Joe, uh, about some of our women. Uh, in the past week, Maya Stage Nielsen has moved up six spots, overtaking first place in the standings. Uh, the first pro female or male to pass 11,000 points in our series. So congratulations to her. She finished seventh place at Ironman 70.3 La Sabla, uh, uh, earning 2,257 points. Uh, that means that second through seventh all moved down one spot, and Alice Albert uh, from the United States remains eighth. Julia Molo from France moves up seven spots to move back into the top ten um, based on her performance at La Sable just a couple of weeks ago, and Ellie Salthouse of Australia drops out, uh, sorry, drops one spot into tenth place in our overall rankings. Yeah, and the athletes to watch that are actually racing today is uh, Daniela Blamel, who she, she's currently sitting in 13th in the point points out standings so hopefully with a good race today she can break back into that top 10 uh, after she got uh, ninth in Las Abeles uh, only two weeks to go uh, Kat Matthews currently in the 21st is in the in the point standings right now she's looking to get back into the mix with a good day uh, only points uh, earned for her first place at Memorial Hermans uh, Texas yep because uh, unfortunately she uh, did uh, get that DQ uh, in Hamburg last month. She'll be looking to get back onto that top little, spot. Little redemption uh, with a win today yeah. could move her uh, move her well into uh, into the standings. And of course, Elisabetta Corridori. She's currently 19th in the point standings and could, with a good performance, move in to the top 10 overall. So athletes getting busy here around um, the the reservoir here, getting ready to get underway as we take a look at our defending Ironman World Champion. Yeah, there's Sam. Lolo has a very quiet season so far. Yeah. Uh, been putting in some great training over the last three months, I hear. And uh, yeah, this guy only knows one way to race, and that's from the front, as we saw when he won the world title back in Nice last year, where he led, was out the front in the swim, and then just basically, yeah, sort of ha took the race uh, by the scruff of the neck, and that was it, game over. So uh, we'll see if he's in that form today. I think a lot of people are curious to see. He has been putting his head down and doing a big block of training to see what sort of uh, impact that will have on his results today mindful. He is an automatic qualifier for the World Championship, but needs to validate um, just to establish uh, his fitness, uh, improve his fitness, that he is uh, going to accept that invitation back uh, to the World Championship. Uh, again, the men competing in Kona as we take a look at some of our women's professionals getting ready to get underway. A smaller field for the women, but as you mentioned, Joe, uh, our defending champion here, Guru Fradas, um, she's the local hero. She lives just up the road here, uh, so the crowds will be going wild for her. And then, of course, Kat Matthews after that disqualification uh, in Hamburg, uh, certainly looking to um, capture the win today. Els Visser, another top name. Man, this woman races a lot. Yeah, hey? she has. She's <laughs> raced, raced a lot. Started her season early in, uh, in, in racing in Oceania a little bit. And then, yeah, as... Uh, I think this is her third Ironman of the year. I might be might be fourth. So yeah, she's uh, definitely uh, asking a lot of her body right now. But um, I've seen it done before. So uh, yeah, let's see how uh, Els Visa ends up today. And, uh, yeah, another notable. We've got Daniela Blymel. Uh, she had a great race in. Um in Hamburg, uh, looking to increase her point standings. Of course, Simone Mitchell and, and Simone Mitchell as well. Uh, and then we're looking at our first view of Ruth Astle this year, who's been battling some calf and Achilles issues. So I know she's super eager to get out there, race, get some points on the board for the Pro Series, and get a qualifying slot for Nice. Yeah, and here we are with our men's introductions. As we mentioned, this is our, our men's number one, Sam Lolo from France. He's defending Ironman World Champion from Nice in 2023. He needs to finish this race to get his uh, verification for uh, Kona, for Kona this year. And wearing bib number two from Poland, it's Robert Wilowiecki. Uh He was 10th at Ironman 70.3 St. George back in May. He is qualified for the Ironman World Championship. And we've got uh, male number three. We've got 
Christian, nope. <laughs> We're waiting on Christian Hogan. Uh, no, this is Antonio Benito Lopez from Spain. Hasn't raced so far in the Ironman Pro Series in 2024, but was first at Pucon and Swansea in 2023. So watch out for Antonio. Uh, next, will it be? Nope, it is going to be bib number five. That's David McNamee out of the UK. He hasn't been racing a lot these last couple of years, but uh, he's a two-time podium finisher at the Ironman World Championship. So look for him to be uh, pretty pretty solid here today. Yeah, very, if it gets hot on the run, watch for him. He's very good in the heat. And this is uh, uh, Matthias uh, Peterson from Denmark, uh, second of the African champs early this year uh, at Ironman South Africa. And he's already got a Kona qualifying spot. So he's going to try and build on that season. And here we have Arthur Horseau from France, uh, who won Ironman's, uh, Ironman Lanzarote in 2023 and was sixth at the Ironman World Champs in Nice last year. And then next in our lineup will be, should be, wearing bib number eight. This is uh, Anthony Costas from France. He was third at Ironman 70.3 St. George this year and fourth at Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga as well. So uh, going uh, the full distance here today. And here's uh, my fellow Tasmanian, Cam Worth, from Australia, <laughs> Tasmania, Australia. He was third at the African Championships uh, early this year and did get his Kona spot. But as we've seen, Cam, he likes to race a lot. Uh, planning on even maybe racing Lake Placid next weekend as well as he builds towards Holy Kona. Holy smokes. And, of course, rounding out our top 10 is bib number 11, Bradley Weiss from South Africa. He was second at Ironman South Africa in 2023 and, of course, seventh at the Ironman World Champs in Nice 2024. He's been a little underwhelmed with his performances so far this year, but he knows the work's in the bank. So uh, hoping for a great day out there today. Yeah, and watch for Brad, who's a great runner. Uh, and in this course with the undulations, 1,000 um, metres of elevation gain, uh, tw th over 3,000 feet of elevation gain will suit someone like Brad Weiss, who's uh, very good on the hills. And let's take a look at our top 10 women wearing bib number one. It's Guru Frada. She is our hometown hero and defending champion from this race a year ago. Yeah, she, this lady can ver run very, very fast. And here we have F number two. F2, Cat Matthews of the United Kingdom, the two times winner at the Ironman Texas in 2023 20, 20, 20, and 2024. Uh, and she's already qualified for um, Nice later this year. Absolutely. Wearing a bib at number three. We spoke of her before. This is Els Visser from the Netherlands. Uh, her results page <laughs> reads a bit like War and Peace in that she races a lot. She was second at Ironman New Zealand in 2024. 2024 and fifth after an unfortunate puncture in Hamburg and just raced a full distance last week. And here we have uh, women's number four, Danielle Blumel from Germany. Uh, she was third in Hamburg after one of the strongest bike splits on the day. So she's already got her spot for uh, Nice later this year. Uh, so watch for her for on a strong bike ride. And wearing bib number eight out of the United Kingdom is Simone Mitchell. She was fifth in 2023 at Ironman Austria. She is one of our athletes in pursuit for a qualified fine slot for the Ironman World Championships in Nice. Wearing number nine is Ruth Astle from United Kingdom. She's returning to racing after an Achilles and calf injury, which has been plaguing her, her last year. So this is her pro series debut. So she's looking to get a good consistent race out there. And wearing bib number 14 out of Italy is Elisabetta Corridori. She was ninth at Ironman Hamburg uh, at the Women's European Championship where she picked up her niece qualifying slot. So no pressure on her today, but certainly looking to add some uh, points to the board for her overall standings. And here we have uh, number 15, Hini Hatakainen uh, from Finland. She was the second Ironman Wales, uh, Wales in 2023. Had an unfortunate DNF at Ironman France in Nice. So she's looking to get her spot, qualification spot here. And wearing bib number 19, also out of the United Kingdom, is Rebecca Anderberry. She was 13th at Ironman Hamburg and is coached by the great Tim Don. There you go. She'll be he's in very good hands there. And here we have, uh, yep, uh, Ruth uh, Cabello uh, from Spain, who's a local in Vittoria Gastez. She's the former Spanish middle distance champion who raced internationally at the ITU Worlds with Sp uh, Spain's elite national team. So, and a quote masters athlete at 44 years old. So extra extra support out there for Ruth, showing what's possible. Absolutely.
And our professional men are off here at Ironman. Victoria Gestes. We talk about some of our fast swimmers. Look for Robert uh, Vietzky, uh, Anito uh, Lopez, uh, Sam Laidlow, certainly David McNamee, uh, Robert Callen, uh, strong swimmer, Kostas Zapuntki, uh, Brad Weiss looking to maybe hold on to that lead pack too, although that's a big ask. Yeah, look, some like Brad's a uh, great one to talk about here. Uh, very, very fast pool swimmer, but um, struggles a little bit to um, connect that to his open water swim. But he did, in, when it counted last year in Nice, when he exited the water with that front pack and came away with a seventh place overall. So let's hope he can have a swim like that today. So right out of the gate to your call, it is Richard Varga in the pink cap off to a very, very quick start. Uh, and the orange cap, no doubt, that is going to be our defending men's world champion, Sam Laidlow, trying to hold on to his feet. So a good start for both of those men. Yeah, oh, and, that, and that's absolutely perfect for someone like Laidlow to have a Richard Varga in the field. I, uh, you can tell the pace. They're already strung out at the front, single file. Usually you'd see as we look back in the pack how they're bunched up. That is sort of more traditionally what we would see at the start of an Ironman race, but the, the pace is on that Varga is setting, so our top five, six guys are already strung out there. No, I'm I'm really happy that Richard Varga's here because it's just amazing to watch such a great swimmer at work. Uh, but it is, it's good. you're seeing separation nearly third between third and fourth already and we're yes. less than 150 meters in dd and at the tail end of that pack looking to hold on to that lead group i saw the yellow cap of both ruben zapuntki uh as well as Ant uh, antonio benito lopez so both of those superstar swimmers looking to hold on but varga sending a message from the start he's yet to finish a full iron man but uh he's getting it he's getting underway pretty quickly here yeah no i think uh, what we've got here was so we've got varga and then we have Laidlow sitting on his feet and then with from my mind it's for uh, antonio benito lopez hanging on for dear life in that third spot and they can already see separation a between third separation. and fourth yep. so a little bit of background on varga this is a guy that the Brownlee brothers used to love because those guys were the best swimmers in ITU uh, if, and still are. Uh, and this guy used to lead out every swim in ITU World Cup. So uh, this guy's renowned and I saw him on the start list and I'm like, I really hope he turns up because he will uh, really change things up in the swim. And it's this is going to be really hard for these other athletes to now, stay, stay even in touch, even someone like Laidlow, to be well, honest. Well, that's what I'm saying. With Laidlow, strategically, just real quickly, how risky is this for him to try to hold pace with Varga? Is he really just using Varga for the first 500 meters to pull him away from any other close-by competitors and then he's really got to let him go? Or is he really going to try to stay on those feet? And what's that going to do to the rest of his day? We are out here at the beautiful Ulibari Gamboa Lake located in the Landa Provincial Park outside of Victoria Gestes. Our pro men are underway with our leader, Varga, and our chaser, actually, yeah. Laidlow's gone to the front. Well, there's something just happened. <laughs> Either Varga did that on purpose, uh, he adjusted his goggles, or just basically said, okay, it's your turn now, Sam. I, I got us out, I've got us a gap, now you do a bit and I'll do a bit. So, I, I don't know, they, maybe they, they talk, talk beforehand, right, that's, yeah. Maybe, if they keep changing lead, then I'd say they probably did have a little bit of a chat before the race. As on the right side of our screen, we look at our professional women looking to uh, get underway here. You're looking at Steph Clutterbuck there in the orange cap uh, at the front of your screen. She is likely going to be our swim leader, a super swimmer in her first year as a pro. Other key cap colors to look for, also an orange, Guru Fradas, who will be one of our chasers today. The swim is not her strength. Kat Matthews will be looking to possibly use Steph Clutterbuck in the same way that Laidlow uh, used Varga there to help her get out. Uh, she's also a very strong swimmer. Els Visser wearing violet. Um, Daniela Blymel in yellow. Ruth Astle also in violet. As our professional women lining up here to get underway, I see the green cap of Kat Matthews lining up right there next to uh, Els Visser. Els Visser. Yeah. Yeah, a little, the women have a little bit more space, smaller field than the men's, but uh, yeah, they're, they're moments away from starting their race. But uh, So yeah. similar similar dynamic for the women. Yeah. We're going to have strong swimmers, Steph Clutterbuck, uh, mm -hmm. Kat Matthews, I would imagine, will be not far behind Steph if she's, if not able to stay with Steph during the swim. But then our chasers, uh, certainly someone like Guru Frades comes to mind uh, that she's going to be wanting to mitigate the damage in this swim. Yeah, no, we'll keep an eye out for her during the bike and her, with her closing run she definitely will talk about her later in the race but her swim definitely not her strength as we're moments away from the women's pro start
And our professional women now underway for Ironman Vittoria Gestes. Valuable points on the line for the Ironman Pro Series, as well as a lot of qualifying slots as we see Steph Clutterbuck doing Steph Clutterbuck things out to a quick start. Yeah, well, well called there, DD. Uh, yes, yeah, Steph Clutterbuck definitely uh, in her first pro year, uh, but swimming is her strength. Uh, a rower uh, that recently moved over to triathlon and has uh, had uh, good success at the age group level last year, but uh, definitely with a swim like this, uh, it puts her towards the pointy race, a pointy part of the race very quickly. And there we go, shoulder to shoulder. Kat Matthews on the right-hand side of your screen in that green cap with Steph Clutterbuck in the orange cap. Uh, Kat might want to tuck in, get on that hip. Uh, enjoy the ride that Steph Clutterbuck could give her through this swim. Uh, the rest of our women a little bunched up, but we see, we see Steph Clutterbuck and Kat Matthews off to an early lead for our professional women. Yeah, this is playing uh, into Kat's hands here. If she can just now move slightly left and yeah. jump onto Clutterbuck's uh, hip uh, or feet, uh, then she definitely would be in a great position to get some early separation here. Uh, and with her bike and run, uh, that would be it would be a very lonely f a day at the front for Cat. But yep. uh, this is a great a great start for her her race today. I, I think Cat's going to want to race super strategically here. She's set uh, to race again in just a couple of weeks, so she's looking to ideally secure the win, but with as little energy expended as possible. So so far so good. Off to a quick start uh, with Steph Clutterbuck uh, doing the doing the work and uh, Cat Matthews enjoying the ride. Yeah, and if we scan back a little bit, de definitely some separation between uh, the feet of Cat and the next females. But I think you can see there in the yellow, uh, Danielle Blamel, I yes. would guess, uh, sitting in about six or seven position uh, right now, at about very early days of the swim, probably not even 200, maybe 150 metres into the swim so far. Sure, and, and that's the kind of thing you would just want to, there, there are quick starters and uh, other athletes that take a minute uh, to sort of get themselves into it, but no doubt our leaders um, pulling away from the rest of the women's field as we come back to the men. And now, are you surprised to see Varga yeah. taking the ride off of Laidlow? Uh, a little bit, yeah. And the gap isn't that big. It's like they use Varga's speed to sort of break that elastic very, very early. And now they've, they look like they've dropped the kick right off. It's a two-beat kick. They're both pretty relaxed. And... Now it's not really stretching that much. Look, it's still a deci uh, distinctive yeah. gap, but you've got people like, uh, I'm guessing, uh, who would we have in here at the front? Um, Zaputki uh, and yeah. uh, Lopez, both in the yellow caps. Yeah. Well, we're back here to our pro men's leaders. That is Sam Laidlow, your defending world champion at the front. Uh, he leads Richard Varga, who is our our uh, shot out of a cannon early this morning, along with our start cannon. Uh, he got off to a very fast start, pulled Laidlow away, and now Laidlow doing a lion's share of the work as Varga enjoys the ride. Yeah, no, that was you exactly right. You shot out of a cannon. That was some super speed that Varga showed in those first couple of hundred meters of the swim. Like and He was dropping some really good swimmers, and yep. they just literally couldn't go in that first hundred with that speed. And to your point, and this may surprise people to learn, but these athletes do talk before the races and... and sort of strategize mm -hmm. and maybe these two decided like hey you know Laidlow said hey you're you're my ticket to having this not be a massive swim group at the start so if you take us out then I'll take over and you can have a free ride you I do mean, the first 200 yeah. and I'll do the next 3.7 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem like a fair deal but Laidlow look normally he's that good at swimming yeah. like if he yeah he'd have to do a lot of work to get out by himself but he has that speed, but not quite Varga's speed, maybe. I'm not so Maybe he does. I don't know. I've never yeah, um, seen how fast Lalo can swim, but it did work out pretty well. So maybe they did talk, but we'll, we'll never know. Or maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll find out. Yep, we had a quick, quick shot there of Steph Clutterbuck, who um, continues to lead our women's race. She had uh, quite a, had extended a lead um, over Cat Matthews. In fact, this is... Steph Clutterbuck going past our last place pro male. So she has inserted herself to the back of the men's race uh, by virtue of her very strong swim. Yeah, she's moving through the water really, really well here. And yeah, that 49 minutes uh, swim from last year might be uh, under some pressure, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's really hard to know. But you can see wind's got up a little bit. You can see on the water, a little bit of texture, not much at all, not, not enough to break this rhythm of this amazing swimmer.
Yeah, she's a great swimmer, and just watching her pattern there, she's sighting about every three to four strokes, which for conditions like this, I think is kind of a lot um, because I, I guess the further away from shore here, we are seeing a bit of texture on the water, but um, every time you pick that head up, even when you do it as well as Steph Clutterbuck does, it drops your hips a little bit, even in the wetsuit. So if you can afford to sight slightly less, as I think on a course like this, Steph probably could, I think you can sight a little bit less, but it's just her rhythm, her pattern. If you notice, it's every three to four strokes. She pokes those eyes out of the water. We call those alligator eyes and gets back to the task at hand as we check in with our race weather presented by our friends at Roca. Current temperatures 13 degrees Celsius, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, just a few clouds. Those clouds burning off as the sun comes up. Wind's still very, very light at just one kilometer per hour, but that humidity, I tell you, 95%. Yeah, that, that's really something to take note of there, Dee. Uh, that will drop. Um, that seems very, very high, but we did have a lot of cloud cover, which sort of traps that humidity in there. But, yeah, uh, hopefully that does come down a lot or it's going to be a very sticky and hot uh, bike and run out there. And, yeah, those aero helmets are going to feel very warm and very uh, mist. <laughs> They're going to get fogged up pretty quick with that much humidity out there. But humidity is certainly not a factor here during the Roca swim as Steph Clutterbuck continues to dominate this uh, swim leg uh, of Ironman Victoria Gastez. She led uh, second place Kat Matthews, uh, but those two swimmers had really separated themselves from the rest of our pro women's field in the early stages. Yeah, no, really uh, early separation there. Uh, as we come back to our men's leaders, uh, same as before, Sam Laidlow, uh, 2023 Ironman World Champion. And Although Laidlow's in second now, so Varga has gone pack, back past him. It's oh, the pink sorry, cap of Varga. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I got complete. Yeah, yeah. so they uh, yeah, they've gone through halfway. Thank you for correcting me on that. Uh, yeah, and Laidlow sitting in second. So yeah, Varga. I'm not sure if Varga's just picked it up or they're just yeah, sort of changing. Varga felt a bit guilty that he'd been sitting there for 20 minutes. Well, and just went it, I mean, it does look like Laidlow's picked his tempo up because you can see, like, Laidlow's not right up on his toes. Like, ideally, you want to be tickling those toes, so to speak, um, nibbling <laughs> on the toenails. <laughs> and as Varga stops again, I don't know what he's doing. This guy's amazing. <laughs> he's, he's not stressed at all, is he? He's like. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen now, that. Let me, let me ask you an honest question in men's, because this doesn't happen very often no, in women's racing. No. Is Sam Laidlow bothered by the sort of, I'm going to call it monkey business of Richard Varga here? Um, no, I don't think so. He's probably quite happy that he's got some company. He knows that Varga's not probably going to be there. Um, and the can you, can you speculate to what Varga's strategy is? But maybe he's, he's only used to doing 1,500 metres, maybe, so he's probably bored. <laughs> <laughs> he's normally used to going 1,500 flat out in about 16 and a half minutes, um, whereas today he's going to be out there for 45. He's probably, yeah, I don't know, losing concentration. Yeah, looking at this men's chase pack, I'm going to say there's 10, 12 guys in that chase pack, and yeah. it looks like they're not quite, well... Pan, 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 pan. Not quite 100 meters up in front. Those those um, sighting buoys typically tend to be about, about 100. 150, 100 meters apart. So not quite 100 meters. So it's not as big a gap as no, we might have thought. I think these are still uh, probably around the 50 to 60 second mark as at a guess. But I think, Laidlow, look, it's a long day. And Varga needs to <coughs> get his head around the fact that if he's bored in the, <laughs> in the swim, Iron Man's a long, he's got many, many more hours to go. But Laidlow, or, look, this or, is... Did he roll on his back, see that the guys were still only about 100 meters back and try to put in a surge to up the tempo a little bit? Potentially. Possibly. Potentially. I think they got their gap and I think they just didn't want to be battling with like 10 other guys out there and they're, they're quite happy just to have this quite small gap. But look, Laidlow, it doesn't really bother him, I think. He's, he's, got, he's a great swimmer, an amazing biker and a great runner. So... This is just setting up. A, a, it's See, just it, a very. It's it shows, a new, his, shows his poise and professionalism because I would be like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's he's completely chilled out about it, and he know. He, look, he's a student of the sport. He he knows who Varga is. And he knows how good a swimmer he is, and he will, will be very. Uh, won't be surprised at all if Varga comes around in the last hundred and tries to gap him. And I don't think Laylo will even break a sweat. He's he just wants to get through this swim with no problems, conserving as much energy as possible. And water temp, it's 
it's wetsuit legal, but it's on the higher end. So yep. 20 degrees. So if you're swimming ITU, this would this would be a non non wetsuit swim or just a wetsuit swim. But you're in there three like two and a half times longer. The, longer. So you do actually sweat quite a lot, and you do yeah generate a lot of heat in those wetsuits. So these guys need to just conserve energy. Doesn't look like they're putting out that much effort. Um, Varga's just super relaxed, and Laidley's just doing his thing. And of course, with the borderline wetsuit temperature for the pros and humid conditions, that's going to impact their hydration strategy. Yeah, certainly. and they were standing in those wetsuits on the start line for a while. They've probably been in their they were probably in their wetsuit 30 minutes before the gun went off as well. So in that Although time, the ambient air temperature was in the mid 50s was, Fahrenheit, so yeah. not too hot pre-race to necessarily be hanging out. It might actually have offered a little bit of warmth. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, especially for those athletes who are prepared in hotter conditions. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, no, not much change here in the men's race. We've got Sam Lalo leading the men's race with Richard Varga sitting closely on his toes. And we are back to the action here at Ironman Vittoria Gastez. We are on the Roca swim course here at the beautiful Ulibari Gamboa Lake located in Landa Provincial Park outside Vittoria Gastez. We're about 17 kilometers outside of the center of the city for this gorgeous swim venue where we have our women's race leader, Steph Clutterbuck uh, doing a great job of it. This is Steph continuing to move through the pro men's field. This is the second pro male she's picked off. Uh, she established a gap. She pulled Cat Matthews out from the start line, but then was able to distance herself from Cat. Um, we think Cat's about 100 to 150 meters back uh, of Steph Clutterbuck at this moment. But uh, Steph Clutterbuck having a great swim so far. She owns our course best. Um, we'll see if she can beat it again today. Yeah, no, she's had a great, great start to her day. Uh, yeah, Kat looked like uh, in the first 100 she was going to just be able to slot in on her feet, but obviously the, the pace was just that little bit too high and unable to hold it. But we'll, we'll get a, a split back to Kat shortly uh, and see how she's going. Uh, we'll think of it, as you said, about 100 metres or so back. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Kat's, Kat's not certainly stressed about stuff. Clutterbuck at the, at the moment um, would have probably liked to have taken advantage of some of that free speed on her feet for as long as possible, but Kat's made some great improvements in her swim. Um, not what I would consider a front pack swimmer just yet, but uh, has been improving um, and working in that direction. So, um, you know, I don't think she's necessarily stressed about where she's at right now. Lots of racing left to go um, and just is looking for a strong swim to start the day. Yeah, absolutely. Where would you place cat like in a Kona swim where would you see her coming out like is she a 50 like second pack or a first pack uh main first main pack obviously you got lucy charles I, I think yeah you've got lucy charles and lauren brandon and, like, yeah, and some and of those superstar and this was the this was the move <laughs> <laughs> oh no this no this is laid low now backstroking and letting varga go past yeah this is another exchange where laid low is on his back and varga is going back to the front. I don't know if that's from before or if that's... Yeah, that, yeah, because Varga's now at the front. It's just a short replay yep. of what just happened. But uh, this guy's having fun with it. <laughs> uh, yes. So we have, yeah, Varga back on the front. Uh, yeah. Keep thinking he's putting the pressure on, but then he just seems to stop and yeah, do a bit of backstroke. So not at, uh, under any pressure whatsoever. Um, to uh, your point about Kat Matthews in the swim, I would say, like, I think a great swim for her. She would be back of the first chase pack uh, with, yep. say, a Jocelyn McCauley. Okay. But I think yep. that would be a great swim for her. Yep. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised to see her front of the second chase pack. So somewhere in between there, obviously aspiring to be first pack, Sans, Lucy Charles, Lauren Brandon. Yep superstar swimmers but i think that is where she would envision herself but probably maybe a half step to go and depends on conditions and her start and how factors play out in the race but uh the swim has been an area of great improvement for her she's always been a super strong cyclist always a, a great runner obviously had the setbacks after the crash and is working her way back from that or i should say is back from that i think we can let that story go because she is back to her old ways but uh, the swim has been an area where she 
if you are going to pick a hole, say, hey, let's put mm. some work in here. Um, and, and she has been doing so. So it's just yeah. a, it's just a work in progress. And um, with race dynamics in this day and age, you know, the demands of the top of the sport, you cannot have a weakness. Um, and the better she can improve that swim, the less she's got to chase on the bike. Yeah, and then um, left, left, there's definitely more in the legs come come to run as well. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm just interested to see uh, your perspective on that. Obviously, racing as a, a female professional as well, um, where she sort of fits in your mind. And obviously, yeah, her bike's come back to what it used to be and her run's always been amazing. And she's obviously got her sights set on another uh, world uh, championship medal. Um, so definitely the swim is something that she's just going to keep progressing and working, chipping away and yeah, limiting that deficit to uh, Lucy Charles Barkley. <laughs> and I believe our men have rounded that last buoy. They keep that buoy to their right shoulder as they make their way towards the exit of this Roka swim course. Race time right now, 44-46. Of course, we're looking at that 46-45. 45.59, I said. I, yep. I think I'm a little off, but yeah. Imagine if these guys went as full gas the whole way. Yeah. Like, imagine what they could do without the backstroke and the, um, <laughs> and, the, and the bobbing and the silly business. <laughs> but uh, it's been quite an uh, interesting swim to, to call. But you can see here, I think, uh, yeah, Varga, as I sort of expected, he wanted to lead this swim. He's no, I don't think he's not ever led a swim. So first one to stand up uh, on the Roka swim course, Richard Varga, closely followed by Sam Lalo in the orange cap. Now let's see what sort of gap they were able to get themselves on the, by our eyesight, about 12 group, uh, 12 mm -hmm. men in that chase pack. Um, as Varga with a very fast run through transition, as we know, it's not a long run to transition in the gear bag, but once they pick up their bikes, uh, it'll be slightly longer as Laidlo working there to get that wetsuit down. Uh, it is uh, Richard Varga into uh, the gear bags first, pulling up that swimsuit. Surprised to see him, and this is the sign of a swimmer. They often don't like stuff on their shoulders. Uh, missed his gear bag there as we see our swim split uh, presented by our friends at Wahoo Element Arrival. 45-23 there. That is going to be a course best for Richard Varga for the 3.8 kilometer swim. Uh, Bypassing the gear bag there, yeah. I was under the assumption that the wetsuit had to go in the gear bag, so I'm not sure and exactly the what, yeah. and what Varga's doing. It's occasionally, officials will allow helmets to be on the bike, but the gear has got to go in the gear bag, so I don't know. Maybe the gear bag's allowed to go, because here we have um, Laidlo grabbing his gear bag and looks like he's going to leave it by the bike. So maybe that's what they have been allowed to do. And actually, I think Varga has done the same. So interesting, because yep. usually you have to re-rack your gear bag, but apparently the pros here able to leave it by their bikes. Yeah, and let's look, look we've got the third male and the next group out of the swim. We've got Pimpernel Perrin uh, from Belgium in 102 behind Sam Laidlow. Uh, David McNamee had a great swim, 106. Antonio Benito Lopez, 107. James Teagle, uh, the young British athlete, 109. Nine, Tomiz uh, Bramore, uh, fr uh, 110. So quite a big pack here. Thomas Davis, Robert Callan, all and uh, Robert uh, Zapunkti. Uh, all in that big group that we kept getting glimpses of on the sw Aroka swim course. Anybody so. missing from that group disappointed not to see Brad Weiss in that group, or is that not necessarily surprising? <laughs> uh, I reserve comment. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, he should. Uh, Brad is an amazing swimmer. Uh, I'm hoping we just need to scroll down further and see uh, if he's made right on the back there. Because I would think um, with a big pack like that, someone like Brad Weiss definitely has the ability to be on that pack. But hopefully if he hasn't made it, he's close enough that he can bridge up quickly without wasting too much energy. But we're seeing Dave McNamee here uh, closest putting on his number belt as he runs to go get his bike uh, and make his way onto the full gas bike course. As our two men's leaders are now across the mount line and underway on the full gas bike course. The finger goes down yeah. to uh, the bike computer to that Wahoo element and uh, press start and they are 
I would say off to the races, but we've been at the races for about an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> Already have been, yeah. With well, that blistering swim of 40, new, unofficial new course record of 45.23, which surpasses Josh Amberger's 2019 swim record of 46.45. So, yeah, a minute 20 and change uh, faster than Josh Amberger. No, we know how fast he is. So these guys were definitely moving, even though they looked like they were out uh, for a Sunday stroll. And as we uh, preview again the full gas bike course, we're looking at three loops for your 180.2 kilometers or 112 miles. It's two larger loops of 74K and one smaller loop of 32K. Bike course is known to showcase the beauty of the region. Uh, it's a rolling course, uh, but it's a, a great course you can um, really carry the momentum from the yep. downhills through the roll like i would call it a rolling course so a strong cyclist will be able to carry the speed through those rollers as our men continue to exit the roca swim course So as we take a look at our women's swim leader, Steph Clutterbuck, who continues to dominate this Roka swim course. Joe, talk me through the mindset of the guys after they come out of the swim. What's going through their minds as they start the bike? Assessing position, thinking yeah, nutrition. They're, look, they're looking around who's around them and assessing whether that was they're in a good position, uh, but also really focusing on what they need to do and not making any silly errors, making sure that they yeah, get their wetsuit off completely with no, no dramas and getting all their nutrition in their back pockets. And just basically just want a smooth, non- urgent uh, transition that feels it's efficient but you don't have to be super fast you just got to make sure that you don't make any silly mistakes because there's still many many more hours of racing to go but all those guys seem to get through without any uh, major dramas as we continue to look at our pro men i see that orange cap there that is going to be um, Cameron Wirth, he was with a other violet cap, which I believe is Arthur Horsall, uh, and a sea of other silver caps there. So if we look at the deficit now, about five minutes, uh, again, just spitballing that out of the water uh, for Cameron Wirth. Uh, bigger than expected, as expected, manageable. Yeah, manageable, yeah. It's, I think the problem with for um for worth is that takeout speed it was super fast yeah. and cams yeah would be the first to say he doesn't quite have that top end speed so he probably didn't like the other guys able to get into that front group and then he probably just saw them just out of reach that whole swim and it would have been a very frustrating swim just seeing uh where he really liked to be cam does really well in those kona like swims where it's a deep water start it's a little bit, there's more feet to um, sort of jump on. Whereas this was quite a select, there's only eight, there's the two out the front, then only eight athletes sort of separated. And Cam doesn't quite have that swim pedigree to jump on that. So uh, I want to see- But as we talk, we talk about some of the stronger cyclists in the field, certainly Sam Laidlow fits the bill there. Cameron Wirth, another super strong cyclist, but Christian Hogenhaug, also a great cyclist. And he is actually um, out, not, where's Cam Wharf? Of s not far from Cam Wharf. So there are some really strong cyclists back there um, that could be uh, good partners. Uh, Robert uh, Vilavietsky, yep. uh, also back there. He's at 301 down out of the swim. So there are there's some, still some firepower back there. Yeah, no, and if you've got Cam Wirth and uh, some of these other great cyclists, uh, yeah, three minutes is not much at all. So, yeah, here we go. We've got Sven Weiss as well, Christian Hogenhau. Uh, Costes uh, was right at the back. Um, and Brad Weiss actually was part, made, did make that pack. Yeah, he was he's, right at the end. Yeah, so. and he's moved up into ninth place overall. Yeah, and yeah. Brad, yeah, he's got so much power. Uh, Xterra world champion, that guy has so much VO2 power. He just needs to sort of like contain it right now and sort of uh, chill because that's a really good swim for him. So he'd be really happy that he's made that group. Costes, uh, very, very, you'll see him very distinctive on the bike. Uh, very slippery aero position. Uh, we'll see him out on the road uh, shortly. But yeah, that next group, it's uh, definitely got some uh, firepower. Uh, so yeah, watch for someone like Christian Hogenhau, who's a very aggressive rider. He, to potentially try and bridge back up to the, that bigger group of the likes of McNamee and Weiss. And, now, and will Hogan Haug and Wirth be compatible bike-wise? 
Well, there's a gap between them yep. right now. Um, but if they... Uh, I think... I'll put, my, I'll put my head on the, the neck on the chopping block, but I think by the time Cam catches him, I think Cam would have found that rhythm that Hogan Howe cannot actually if sustain. sustain. Okay. If Cam's on his one of his better bike days. Yeah, one of the surprises for me was Arthur Horseau from France. Uh, yeah, back with Cam Worth, which it's an opportunity. Like when you can't when you're with Cam Worth that you can burn a match and maybe get back in the race. But I expected him to be more up with the lights of uh, at maybe um, I'm trying to think, uh, at least up with Hogan Hull, uh, like around the two, two and a half minutes back out of that lead pack. But yeah, he's a little bit back and got some work to do. Uh, Arthur Horso of France. Super surprised by the number of guys who are not swimming with their kit up, even in a wetsuit swim. Surprising to you? Uh, I would, I would agree, like agree what they did, but it also does slow down your transition. Because the rest restriction, if you're not a good swimmer, I think it puts a lot of extra pressure on your shoulders, especially yep. when you're in the water. Well, for we saw Varga do it, so even for a good swimmer, yeah, they it prefer doesn't, the it naked shoulders, it perhaps. It would feel natural. Um, yes, and yeah, uh, it's definitely, I think, uh, adds a little bit more restriction, especially if your wetsuit is fitted quite tight. Sure. Uh, so yeah, the problem with this is because it's a very short, short transition, transition, you didn't really have enough time to get and are your those things down you, and are then those get things you factor in? Would you deal with the discomfort of slightly more restriction to speed up your transition? What do you think the tipping point is there and I how much would, time? Because I, for when I raced, it would I'd be the difference between me making the front pack or not. Yep. So I'd rather lose, a, lose 20 seconds messing around um, and trying to get my suit back up. I'd like Jan would yeah. do the same thing. He would yeah. have it roll down. Uh, I, it's only really good s swimmers you see that have them like their sleeves up um, anymore. Because um, I think it, it, people have learned that it does add a lot of pressure and you just well, create actually, a lot more lactic. Yeah. It seems well, you just seem to you just get this uh, really uncomfortable feeling. So on the women's side, we actually see uh, Lucy Charles Barkley swim with it up, but Lauren Brandon swim with it down. So it really it's it's a matter of personal preference. But the reason I asked the question. Mm is that it, um, it, it's it's a factor that you need to consider. You need to consider the length of the transition. How long am I gonna have to stand there while I pull my kid up? Because obviously you can't start biking if your kid's still around your waist. Yep. And these are the things that you have to sort of think about that are specific to each race venue that people might not realize that these are considerations. Yeah, absolutely. As we see our lead female exiting the Roka swim course, what an amazing swim here. 50-ish uh, and a half minutes. Of course, we will get the official time once she crosses that timing mat, and we will show it uh, courtesy of our friends at Wahoo Element. Uh, Wahoo Element Rival. There we have it right there. Whoops, that wasn't it, but it's coming. Nope, still not it. It's coming. <laughs> um, but I, just eyeballing the clock, it doesn't look like she bested her time from a year ago. She's at 50-40. Uh, that's Steph Clutterbuck out of the UK. Uh, uh, again, a good swimmer. Kit is up. Uh, she's going to grab that blue gear bag so that she can deposit her swim gear into the bag. Uh, leave it by the bike. I believe the pros have been giving that... Um, Permission that may be different to the to the age group rule. Yep. Um, sometimes there are small specific differences like that. So always good to attend that briefing, read the athlete guide, and know what the rules are. As she is actually one who's stripping her wetsuit at uh, the gear bags. Um, well, she's got plenty of space. There's no one around yeah, her. She's not true. fighting for space at all. So uh, yeah, it looks super super relaxed here. Uh, yeah, just taking care of business. Uh, long day ahead, but uh, yeah, making it look pretty pretty easy, easy right now. But it's interesting to see that she was a little slower than her age group time last year. Yep. But I think that's actually a good thing. She looked. I don't think she's really expended much energy in this swim at all. Um, and look, I think she could have probably swum faster than last year if she had to, and she had maybe some other female that too, around well, her. Well, I was going to say, last year she might have had some age group men around her that helped push her. She didn't need to. Yeah, yeah, I think this, this is a great start. She looks super relaxed. She looks pretty fresh running through transition here. Uh, seamless transition. And going back to the kits, it's also like how the kit is designed by whichever apparel you're racing sure. in. These 
race kits are made for aerodynamics. They're not made for swimming. Yeah. Um, but some fit differently and different depending on your body type as well. They may actually feel quite relaxed around the shoulder, but some are so tight that you have to breathe in to basically get it zipped up. And that's purely for aerodynamics. So that does not make sense to put that restriction on your chest and your sure. ability to breathe and shoulder restriction in a, in a swim. But this kit, uh, obviously for Steph, uh, had no bearing on that at all. But Fifth, key, key and, takeaway there, practice. Yeah, right? and, and no, try, and try test it both ways. And test yeah. it. Take, be that athlete at the pool that turns up in their race kit. Yeah. Didi, you do this. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, but practice, do it. Do a 400 for time one day in a wetsuit with your sleeves um, up. up. And then the next Friday, do it with the sleeves down. Yep. So we'll go ahead and hypothesize, guy of his size, what kind of power range is he pushing? And what's what's the bike strategy for someone who's as strong on the bike as Sam Lay, though? I think he will try and even split this bike. Uh, he would be okay if someone tries to ride up to him. I think he's going to execute his race. Uh, because he will probably hit around. I'm guessing. I don't. Ooh. I don't know what Sam can push, but I'm cl guessing around 300, close to 300 would be at his weight uh, and size. But uh, I might we've, be wrong. So. We've got Cat Matthews exiting with a very, Two very balls. large pack, including Daniela Blymel, yep. Ruth Astle, and Els Visser. I'm surprised by this. Yeah, well, it's a lonely. If she got dropped early yep. uh, by Steph, then yeah, it's hard to sort of keep that pressure on the whole swim and if she did a, had a cheeky look around some of the buoys and went oh why am I busting myself when I could sit back with the pack I'm only 20 seconds in front of him anyway and just yeah uh, comfort in number but only uh, numbers but uh yeah uh, I'm surprised it's, that Google's actually such a big group. I thought they were, were going to see ones and twos. I, th but yeah, yeah, all, all I thought together. it was going to be Cat all on her own with maybe another pack of, you know, three to four, but surprised. Uh, great swims there from uh, the likes of Daniela Blymel. Uh, Ruth Astle has also been doing a lot of work on the swim. Isn't that often the case um, when you suffer a run injury or swim and bike tends to come to a new level and uh, know through the frustration of injury that uh, Ruth was working on that swim and it seems to be paying dividends and Els Visser, uh, Daniela Blymel and Ruth Astle all there with Cat Matthews. Yeah, so Cat Matthews second out of the water, 4.27 behind uh, women's leader Stephanie Clutterbuck who had an exceptional swim. Closely followed in third, Els Visser, Simone Mitchell, Elizabeth Curidori. Curidori, thank you. Uh, Ruth Astle, uh, yeah, Katrina Wolf, and Francisca Rang as well uh, in that pack. So I think we have eight women uh, of my counts, uh, all exiting the Roka swim course together. And yeah, pretty frantic. Uh, yeah, Steph definitely had a lot more space than these ladies in here. Wow. <laughs> wow that's a, they're definitely uh, fighting for position here. Um, yeah, he's, I think we're getting mixed up with uh, one of the age, uh, pro, pro, uh, pro men um, who's, uh, yeah, and here we go. And this, he's like, get me out is, of here before I get swallowed this is by the rest of the pro women. Uh, who's, uh, yeah, putting the pressure on early. And this look just could be tactical. Or just, I want to be sitting in second wheel. I want to, that's the wheel in front. Daniel Blumel, I think he's in the pink. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's a pro male in the oh, pink. Oh, that's a pro male, sorry. That's a pro male oh, in the pink with so, Elizabeth Curridori oh, so and Elspisa. Okay, so, yeah. Elspisa, sorry, sorry, Elspisa. So she just wants to be on the bike. If you're on first, less chance of running into another athlete. Particularly at that mountain space. line, right? Yeah, it's, it is quite narrow yep. from what we saw. Um, so that's, look, she's a great little runner. So yeah, um, good to get some space, but look, Give it a couple of kilometers and all space out pretty pretty quickly. But what I used to like to do when I was, I used to actually push my bike at an extra 10 meters past the mount line to give yourself some space. To give yourself some space because yeah. people just get bunched up and then you're like crashing into people. I'm like, well, I'll just run past and then I don't have to worry about you guys. Well, and it's one of those times where you actually do almost by necessity take your eyes off the road in front of you because you're looking down to make sure your feet are getting on the pedals, your feet are getting into the shoes. So you want a little bit of sa space for safety reasons mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So uh, yep. good to see all of the women safely mounted. I saw Kat Matthews charging to the front and no doubt she will, um, she will charge to the front of that pack. 
probably be joined, I mean, again, Daniela Blymel, outstanding cyclist, one of the fastest bike splits at uh, Ironman Hamburg at the Women's European Championship. As we look at our women's defending champion coming out of the water, this is Guru Fradas. That's not a bad gap necessarily. Um, she's looking at less than five minutes, so maybe three to four minutes there Ooh. to the chase group. Um, so yeah, really, really, really good swim for, for Guru Fradas, I would say. Yeah, really, really good swim. Yeah, and we'll definitely touch, uh, keep an eye on her on the bike. And uh, yeah. if she's in any range of, yep. of the of the podium off that bike, watch out because uh, yeah, a, a couple of sub two fifty marathons I think uh, she's had in. The, yeah. She's the one athlete that could put pressure. Again, we're foreshadowing quite a bit, but could put pressure on Cat Matthews. I think she's one athlete that could do it if she can just mitigate the damage on the bike. Yeah. Uh, depending, again, on the factors on the day. We know Kat wants to win, but race conservatively. She's got other big races coming up. Um, so, yeah, uh, Guru Fradas, great swim for her and, and could impact um, how things play out. Yeah, but, uh, and as, as defending now, champion, yeah. just gives you that little bit extra or maybe a lot yeah. <laughs> uh, of motivation to really bring out everything on race day. But here we are. I think we've had a lead change for the men's. Uh, Robert Callan, if you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, followed by Sam Lalo there sitting in second. Yep, and the men stretched out behind them. We can see uh, a big group there and all riding draft legally. The men sorting themselves out as the women take to the full gas bike course. But we're going to take a quick commercial break as we will come back in just a minute. Yeah, he's really, uh, really put that hammer down here. And it's just going to be interesting to see who actually responds to this very aggressive move. Very, very early on, we're not even through the 24.8 kilometer checkpoint yet. And Ruben Zapunkta is really uh, applying a lot of pressure. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what, what happens. It'll be good to get a long shot here and see who has actually gone with this move. Uh, I think someone like Lalo will be like, Okay, you can do that, but I'm just going to stick to my numbers. I think Laidlow knows what he needs to do. And if he executes anything like he did last year in Nice with similar power numbers, I think um, he will, it may be later, he will pull, pull this lead back in. Yeah, well, Zabunki is one of our athletes here who uh, needs a qualifying slot mm -hmm. for the Ironman World Championship. So uh, maybe looking to assert himself um, into the conversation to get that very thing done. Yeah, looking, looking really, really smooth, and um, yeah, he's looking back already. Yep, yep, and just making sure that that gap has actually stuck. And um, now he needs to go about his his work. Uh, it's very, very early days to to make an sure. attack. Sure. But if you look at the course profile here, um, down the bottom of the screen, this is actually like it's it's a net loss right now. So it's quite a fast part of the course with a few little undulations. So maybe. When he pre-rode the, the course earlier this week, this was a section he already identified that maybe, oh, this suits me, this suits my strengths. If I'm in the mix, have a good swim, this is where I'm going to try and uh, put the pressure on. On the likes of, I think, uh, this uh, this is uh, Varga, uh, the, who actually led our men's uh, swim today, uh, navigating that roundabout. And he's been under pressure, put under quite a lot of pressure right now. Because when you have someone uh, put on that much pressure at the front, there's definitely going to be a response. You can't help yourself. So it looks like Varga is the last male in this group, and he looks like he's, he's working yo -yoing pretty hard. A little yeah, bit off working the back, pretty hard yeah. to to try and stay in contact. So it's definitely been an injection of pace into this men's top ten right now. That's right. Our men now through uh, 29 uh, kilometers on the bike. We're waiting for that bike split to update from 24.8. Uh, uh, kilometers as we come back to our age groupers back at the mount line, uh, getting them so oh oh practice those transitions there. We saw that athlete uh, nearly uh, <laughs> stumble over there. He caught himself. Glad to see that, but um, just a good lesson to practice your transitions. One yeah, of those small like, things that can pay big dividends. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, definitely you don't want to start your day like that. And uh, when you train 12 to 20 hours a week, just take maybe. 20 minutes of those hours and <laughs> of that time a week and just practice the little things because they can make up, uh, could it uh, really have a big impact on your race? And we're back with our women's leader, Stephanie Clutterbuck of the UK, uh, looking super smooth, uh, enjoying quite a uh, 
good buffer on the chase females of around uh, four minutes, but we'll, we'll get an update on that split at the 24.8 kilometre and see if they've managed to pull that back at all. Also an update uh, from out on the course. Uh, unfortunately, if you are a Franzi Ring uh, fan, bib number F29 from Germany, she has withdrawn from the race. She's actually a strong swimmer. We thought we would have seen her a little bit further up, pushing the pace in the swim. Uh, she is ill uh, and is unfortunately a DNF uh, here today. Uh, we hope she has a speedy recovery and can get uh, herself onto a start line super soon and use all of that good fitness. It's tough when race day coincides with a sick day. It's really, it's really tough to, to manage. So our, our thoughts go out to Franzi and hope she's feeling better soon. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the way to start a long day of swim, biking, running if you're not feeling 100%. And we are back with our men's leader, who's yeah looking really, really smooth right now, um, putting a lot of pressure on the chase men. But I think, as we saw, when, uh, they seem to have started to respond because it's starting to spread out quite a bit, as opposed to 10 minutes ago when they were all uh, quite happily uh, in a nice sort of pace, uh, evenly spaced pace line uh, going on the flat, but this has definitely injected a little bit more uh, intensity into the men's bike early in, early on. Yeah, it's definitely an aggressive move to make early on, but uh, Ruben's strength is his bike uh, more so than uh, the swim in the run. Well, he's a good swimmer too, but uh, the bike is definitely his strength. Uh, as we said, he was second at Ironman Switzerland earlier this year, uh, back in early June. Uh, and sec uh, sorry, he won uh, Ironman Provence 70.3. Uh, he likes the he likes some of the punchy courses. Yep. Um, he's done quite well um, in Mallorca. Uh, he likes to race in Switzerland, uh, so he likes to use that bike strength uh, and certainly putting it to work out here in the early stages of this full gas bike course. Back to the action here as the athletes uh, pro men through about 30K on this full gas bike course. As we take a look at our men's chase group, I believe this is. One of our men's chase groups. Yeah, here's yeah, here, our first look at uh, Brad, Bradley Weiss. Brad Weiss, yeah. Uh, we'll be interested to see how he's going. Definitely trying to get some calories right now. Uh, don't think he's maybe gone with the move. Uh, uh, that uh, Zabunkt, uh, Zabunkt, uh sort of started, but it looks like that might be Magnamy, which, um, yeah, would make sense. Well, uh, pre-race uh, footage of those guys running to get running together for a uh, course uh, preview, but uh, yeah, these guys are probably outside of Laidlow, uh, the two pedigree runners. Uh, but that looks like they've uh, maybe been dislodged from, from this group at this point. Yeah, from the lead group. And also looking at the tracker, if you're a little confused by some of the names that you are seeing, uh, I believe we've had a malfunction with the 24.8 kilometer tracker. It indicates guys uh, who are further down the field. It doesn't look like the, the timing map woke up in time. So uh, we're showing our leader as someone who moved up 34 spots uh, in the last timing segment. So yeah. uh, give us a sec to straighten out those timing splits and don't be alarmed. Uh, we will update that uh, as soon as all of the data flows in. Sometimes it's just a little slow coming from some uh, outer more uh, parts of the course. Yeah, that's a shame. Hopefully when the women come through that checkpoint, it's, uh, we can get a good split on uh, the chase group of Kat Matthews and Els Visser and Daniela Blumel and see if they've managed to pull back any time on our women's leader, Stephanie Clutterbuck. But we are looking, I believe, at Laidlow. Yep. Um, so this is our lead three here. men. So, yes, we're seeing Laidlow and Callan, I think, are the Swedes sitting there and leading our men's race. I'm assuming uh, they've pulled back to Sapunkta. Yeah, well, there you go, Bradley Vice. Uh, he's such a such a sensible young man, just really level-headed, inspiring work ethic. Um, did a lot of his prep for Nice last year with Jan Frodeno. I think Jan is a great, you know, I, I, I don't want to, it sounds corny to use the word, but great mentor to him, great sounding board for him. Um, and the fact that Jan Frodeno, like, 
points to you and says, hey, I want to do my prep for you for this race. I mean, just an out, outstanding opportunity for Bradley Weiss to learn. Um, you were making the point during that interview that the Nice course really suits Brad. He's a small guy, so all that climbing, super good for him. A little bit of a different story in Kona? Yeah, there's, still, there's plenty of um, climbing in Kona. It's just, uh, yeah, the, it seems the bigger guys seem to have that power. It's not, they're not steep climbs, whereas Brad's power to weight is exceptional. Yep. Uh, Two-time, correct me if I'm wrong, Xterra world champion. Yeah. And he has made the, the transition from Xterra to 70.3 to Ironman. He has got so many good Ironman results, especially at Ironman South Africa. Yes. Uh, but then seventh at Nice um, world ch uh, champs last year with a penalty. <laughs> um, so it's amazing. So, yeah, amazing transition. And, yeah, look, he's a, he's a great guy, Brad. Uh, got a good head on his shoulders amazing work ethic that it's guy super telling for a guy who is seventh of the world championship to say yeah and now i'm struggling to qualify for the ironman world championship yeah. that's how competitive it Look, is and he's and he's uh yeah amazing sport uh, um support network his wife nina uh is right behind him yep. uh she's out there today with their uh, with their kiddo as well supporting and she's him. on it with the, sp oh, with the splits yeah. and the, she takes her job very she very seriously very, very full seriously. credit to her i love it yeah no <laughs> nina does an amazing job and uh yeah they've been uh, brad's been training Levine Vino, uh, for Lavinio, sorry, um, for the last uh, month, I think, to specifically prep for this race. And he's had a lot of uh, good ex good uh, training out there before. He got introduced to that place uh, with, by Sebastian Kinlay. Uh, they trained together uh, uh, two times, I think, leading up to big races when Kinlay was um, training hard for World Championships. So he went back to a place that he knows he can get good work in. And look, he's put himself in a good position. I'm really happy he had a good swim. Um, put himself in a place where he can ride with guys um, that are at his level and then if he has good legs uh, when they put their shoes on for the Hoka run course uh, watch this guy move he's got a handful of low 240 run splits under his belt already he's only been doing Ironman about three or four years so uh, amazing pedigree Looks like we have a little bit of a splintering in this chase group that is Thomas Davis in the blue kit I can't tell who has gone off the front here? Uh, would that be Lopez? Yep, that yep. is uh, Antonio Benito Lope Lopez. Lopez. So a little bit of a splintering there, a little bit of daylight in between these two and the rest of the chasers with David McNamee and Bradley Weiss. You can see that uh, that cord getting Getting stretched, uh, I think if the guy on the front of the chase group uh, has his wits about him, he can close that down. But uh, again, these moves happen. You have to be aggressive uh, and, and heads up. If you're further back in that chase group, you're in an unfortunate spot because you don't want to burn that match to go all the way to the front and hope that the guys on the front will uh, will close it down. Yeah, no, absolutely right. And if you saw the the, the profile on, on the race, uh, the graphic there just before, that was at a quite a little, yeah, it comes back on right now. 72.7, uh, definitely a bit of a kick up. And now it looks like a bit of a false flat into a bit of a climb. So I think uh, Benito's actually identified this as a spot that suits his strengths. And he's like, okay, I'm good. Little punchy climber out of the seat, get a gap and then settle in and try and, he doesn't want to be dragging all these athletes around. Um, but wouldn't surprise me if this comes back together. Look, these guys are very evenly matched. And just a little update uh, from out on the course. He is not in this group, but uh, getting word from our spotters out on course that Bib M27 has been issued a drafting penalty. Uh, that is 27. That's Varga. Um, forgot he was not in the swim anymore and that drafting was not allowed. But uh, again, just a quick lapse in judgment, though. But he'll stand down his penalty at the next penalty tent. But uh, not a great not a great thing for Varga, but uh, lots of racing left to go. So keep your head on and uh, get back into it. As we said, Bradley Weiss came in second, uh, seventh at the Ironman World Championship with a drafting penalty. So um, yeah. things can happen as we come back to our women's leader, Steph Clutterbuck. Yeah, no, I uh, definitely need to yeah, sort of take it on the chin and just sort of deal with it and then get back in the race. Just quickly before we talk about the women's race, um, Cam Worth. Big gap deficit out of the swim, but is tracking pretty well. He's moving up pretty fast. Uh, 108.57 split through 52.1, which is on par with the lead male. So he's riding as fast as the front guys. So he is inching his way back into that 
a group of Brad Weiss and, uh, and, and the likes. But back with our female leader here, Stephanie Clutterbuck, still riding really, really well, and we'll be really interested to see what split comes through at the 52.1 kilometre mark and see if Danielle Blamel, Elvisa, Kat Matthews, and Ruth Astor have made any leeway. And we are uh, getting an update out on the course uh, that uh, bib number M1 has received a blue card for drafting. Um, the penalty occurred at kilometer number 69. Uh, the penalty tent is at 72. Uh, so athletes are required to stop at the very next penalty tent. So for Laidlow, uh, he's gonna have a stand down and have to get himself back into the race. So uh, unfortunate penalty for Sam Laidlow, definitely not the way uh, you want things to be going. Yeah, just to recap, so we're going through the 72.2 kilometer Usapukte, Callan, and Lay Lake uh, with a gap to Christian Hogenhab of 244. And now rejoining our women's at Chase Pack, who sits uh, at last check at about 215, 220 back. Um, they are doing great work. Els Visser still looking super strong and smooth. Uh, we had Daniela Blymel fire to the front of this group, uh, wanting to take a turn at the front to set the pace. Uh, Kat Matthews in there and Ruth Astle, uh, who has been sitting at the back of that group uh, from the start, uh, being a little conservative again, maybe a little bit tentative, not, sh not, not really sure where the fitness is. She's been battling that calf and Achilles issue for quite some time. Oftentimes that means the swim and bike can elevate quite a bit because you put increased focus on that. Um, but certainly unsure of her run, so wanting to conserve as much energy. She has stated her priority, yes, get some points on the board in this pro series, but first and foremost, get that qualifying slot for Nice. Yeah, get through um, in one piece. And look, lack this one thing is training and then there's racing and she hasn't raced for over a year from what I understand so you just sort of you don't know that self-pacing and like I think she's doing the right thing sitting back uh, at the at the, at the at legal distance and just sort of watching these other women sort of set the pace I think it's very very smart very smart and I think on the run she should do the same thing like if that Achilles and calf isn't still 100%, yep. you've got to really set out your own pace. You can't be blowing out of T2 thinking uh, going to go for a new P PR. Uh, she, I think she's playing it smart and keeping, putting herself in the right position to get that uh, that World Championship qualifying spot. And honestly, Kat Matthews as well. I think she's looking around saying, hey, you know, Danielle, if you want to do the work on the bike, I am happy to have you do that. I think she's looking around and saying, I know what you can run, I know what I can run. I think she's saying the same of Els Visser, who's coming off a full distance race just a week ago. Uh, she's out there with Ruth Astle, who hasn't run a full marathon since Ironman World Champs for Women a year ago, also with a questionable calf. Mm -hmm. um, I think she's thinking about Steph Clutterbuck up the road and thinking, hey, I don't need to do extra work here. So very smart racing from Kat, uh, sorry, Kat Matthews thus far as well. Yeah, no, and I, from what I hear, that her biking is back to its, its very best. And it's taken a little bit since uh, that horrific accident uh, nearly two years ago now, um, but she's back to full force. But it's one thing to be at full force, but you don't have to use it. You can save that and just go with the pace that Daniel Blumel is setting, which is a really good one. And she's pulling them back very nicely to that front position. And Kat Matthews, she gets off with just a little bit more in her legs and uh, can execute those that run that we all know uh, that she can because uh, amazing uh, runner, uh, especially over the uh, 70.3 and Ironman distance. And now as we said, she was being super <laughs> she patient. Heard She's like, she heard oh, us. yeah? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, hang on, no. <laughs> yeah, so no, looked super smooth, uh, very confident, I think, in her biking and bike and run right now. And that's that swim's just getting better every race. So, yeah, she looks really, really smooth out there. She's coming off some really good good racing. Unfortunate um, that she did get a TQ in her last Ironman, but look, that just saved a little bit more in the tank for this race. So you expect a big second half on the bike here from uh, uh, from Matthews here. Yeah, her mindset's like super strong mentally, obviously would have to be to have come back from uh, her crash, uh, come back from the disappointment of her DNF in Kona a year ago. I think a lot of hope um, and 
you know, preparation went into that race, uh, so full of expectation coming off her second place at the 70.3 World Champs, and then just for whatever reason didn't have it on the day. Uh, and I think it rattled her a bit. Um, came into this season, uh, started with a DNF at a race again, having that calf tear early on the run, uh, nursed it back to health, uh, was able to defend her title in Texas, and did so with some smart racing. Yeah. Uh, walked some of the aid stations there to offload the stress on the calf, uh, was still able to not run to her full potential necessarily there, but did enough to get the job done. Uh, so she is now looking forward to her next world championship uh, later in Nice and looking to add to her points total here. Again, probably not what was scripted to race this race. Uh, probably hoped that Hamburg would have gone differently, uh, but she's here now and um, is doing a, doing a great job of it. So back to our action here. This is our lead group of three. Uh, it is Robert Callen, Ruben Zupwinki, uh, and Sam Laidlow. Sam Laidlow was given a drafting penalty, uh, but he is out there riding the other athletes that you see. Uh, we are on our second big loop of the course, so our pro men leaders uh, passing lapped age group athletes at this point. Adds a degree of focus, concentration that you've got to have, uh, a little bit more heads up riding for sure. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And it's sort of a benefit to being in a smaller group or even by yourself at this point because, yeah, trying to uh, get past some of the age groupers that are starting on their first lap uh, can get a little bit congested. But right now it looks like it's pretty smooth sailing, plenty of room road for everyone. But, yeah, these guys are ticking along very, very nicely. Um, definitely want to keep an eye on Christian Hogenhal, who's at last check at 80 kilometres, three minutes and eight seconds with Matthias Peterson. Uh, the other fellow, Dane, uh, following, trying to follow. So they've uh, given up week. a little bit of time. They've given up about 20 seconds in that last timing segment. Yeah, yeah. So keep an eye on that. And then we're obviously looking for the next check um, of the bigger group uh, uh, coming down. But here we are on shot. This is Robert Callan uh, from Sweden. And um, he's looking super smooth out there and uh, making uh, light work of this. But, yeah, looking pretty good. Our lead three men locked in on the second lap of this three-loop bike. Again, two larger loops and then one smaller loop. So pro men sharing the course uh, with our age group athletes who are on their first lap of this full gas bike course. Yeah, so they went through that first lap. Uh, super fast bike course. You can see the, the road surface is uh, pretty fast and uh, really fast average speed right now. Robert Callan right now is averaging 46.3 kilometers an hour, so... That's a, that's that's a lot a, of kilometers. Yeah, uh, he's uh, ticking along very, very quickly. So that's a, that's a very, that's a close to maybe uh, around a four hour bike split at this speed, but um, still plenty of cycling to go. But we are back on here, and this is... Christian Hogenhauer. This is Christian Hogenhauer, num M number M3, who's definitely driving it, but uh, unable to actually make any... Um, time gains on those top three yet, as yet. Right up at the front of the men's race with the Swede, Robert Callan driving the pace here. These guys, uh, we have currently, well, currently have a group of three, <laughs> but uh, if you've just tuned in, Sam Laidlow, who's currently sitting third on the road with uh, Robert Callan at the front of the race, uh, was issued a penalty at kilometre 69. Uh, the penalty tent was at kilometre approximately 72. Uh, he did not uh, serve his penalty at this penalty tent, so has been disqualified. We are yet to confirm whether he has been told, but uh, we were informed that uh, it may be too dangerous to get to him to uh, tell him, so he might not find this out until T2. So stay with us uh, for the end of the bike um, and see what Sam decides to do, whether he could, decides to pull out uh, or continue the race and protest the decision after the race is completed. So a little bit of drama here at Ironman Victoria. A Gaz little says. bit. A lot of drama, <laughs> Didi. <laughs> I'm pacing myself because it's only going to get more. Uh, I know. <laughs> well, now we're uh, tuning in with Robert Callan, who is our race leader. He's a guy who's been racing professionally for uh, seven years now, but only made his Ironman debut uh, in 2021 at Ironman Florida, where he actually finished on the podium. So um, 
big confidence booster there. Didn't have quite the performance he might have liked at the Ironman World Championship in 2022, finishing 31st place, but a solid sixth place finish at Ironman Israel in 2022. Uh, and a year ago at Ironman Hamburg was 10th overall and had a great performance at uh, Memorial Hermann Ironman Texas this year, uh, finishing fifth with a 403 back split there. Yeah, just looking at some of his bike splits, the guys posted 403, 359, 407, 410, 403, 403. These are some very handy bike splits. I was going to say, it goes ahead and tells you how much time he spends on his bike in training so that he doesn't spend much time on the bike in a race. Yeah, it's unbelievable uh, just to have one of those, let alone like five or six. So definitely he's with the fastest run split of, I think, a 252. Um, back in Hamburg last year. So, look, he's a setting himself up. A little work to do on that run, but. Yeah, but if he, look, at the moment, he's building up a bit of a lead. At the last check, uh, we he had a good lead on some of the pure runners in the field. Uh, we're at eight minutes on Teagle, Lopez, McNamee, and we're just over halfway. So if he can extend that to 12, 15 minutes, and run a 250. He's going to be. They he's have to run sub 240, yeah. which absolutely they can. But it gives him a real good chance of uh, staying on that podium, or if not winning. And, <laughs> you and, never know. And getting himself that qualifying slot because he, I believe, is one of the athletes that needs that qualifying slot. Um, in addition to some of those brilliant runners, Mac May, um, Bradley Weiss, uh, all in pursuit of that. Um, Hogan Haug as well, all in pursuit of those uh, that uh, Kona qualifying I slot. Th I think Callan actually has his Kona slot. Um, oh, from Texas. From yes, Texas of course. This yes, year. of course. Yeah, he, yes. He, he Sorry, I misspoke. Yep. So, yeah, I think he's, well, that's, it's a great position to be in. He's Kona qualified. He's just here to get points yep. <laughs> in the Pro Series, and he's here to, to win, or to, at the very least podium. So, yeah. And uh, here we yeah, go. So we'll sing a pass. Forget in, about those guys. The they don't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a very different mindset. Yeah. Um, I guess when you've already got, got, got your spot for Kona, you can just lay it all out there and be super aggressive. And, and yeah, no, well, I've already got my spot. I've got nothing to lose. Uh, and we just saw a spot to try and get a number on this athlete. This is Katarina Wolf, I believe. Uh, okay. Uh, from Germany? Yep. Uh, she is back a little bit um, here, uh, definitely chasing. Um, she raced in Hamburg as well and finished 11th. Um, so looking, uh, again, another one of those athletes that needs a qualifying slot uh, to Nice if she should choose to race there. Um, but Katarina Wolf out of Germany. Yeah, looking super smooth on the bike, uh, moving away through the field after... Uh, a slight, slightly slower swim, but yeah, looking looking really good. Very early days, still got plenty of time to move away up a few more positions before uh, they get to T2. So uh, seems to be pacing things uh, very well at this stage. Yep, she's in seventh place overall right now at last time check. Was riding with um, Elisabetta Curadori, who, who I believe that's Elisabetta. Yeah, yeah yep. there's Elisabetta right there. And I believe way back in the background, you saw the quick spot of Simone Mitchell, um, who is in eighth place. So these three riders uh, hanging out together, Elizabeth Curadori, Katarina Wolf has gone to the front of this second chase, um, and Simone Mitchell uh, sort of hanging off the back of the second chase group there. Yeah, and nothing's really changed in that uh, s small group at the front. Uh, Ruth Astle still uh, riding smart and uh, sitting sitting there with that group. And uh, what a great way to come back to racing. Uh, nearly halfway through the bike and sitting in a great position. Yeah, so far so good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm guessing in the back of my mind, though, the, the bike and the, the, probably the swim in the bike was the least of our worries. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, with Achilles' calf issue, issue it's, uh, that's going to be more... That's, uh, that's the, the elephant in the room. More the worry. But <laughs> as she um, builds into her run and uh, she'll gain confidence, if everything feels good, you'll know very quickly from... And you've had Achilles' issues. I've had Achilles' issues. You know pretty quickly if it's going to be an issue. Um, and hopefully she gets the green light in that first uh, lap of the run. Because four laps on the run and she can just keep building and staying strong and get through this race. Uh, uh, one, healthy, and maybe two with, with that, uh, that uh, World Championship qualifying spot. 
And again, our beautiful overhead shots here. Some of our sections of the course a little bit harder to get that connectivity to our cameras as well as the fact that now uh, we are with lapped athletes and on some tight roads. So uh, for the safety of the athletes, we're enjoying some of the scenery while we bounce in and out where appropriate to get some of the coverage of our athletes still on course. Our women uh, now at uh, 99.4 kilometers. Uh, so we are, again, waiting on that, that slow time split uh, from there. But again, it takes a little while for that data to flow through. Uh, so just looking to see if that chase group has been able to get that gap down to under two minutes. It was Steph Clutterbuck again all day uh, out in the lead from the start early this morning, now through uh, 99, nearly 100 kilometers of racing. And she is still our women's leader, but the group behind doing all they can to reel her in. And that's Kat Matthews, Els Visser, Daniela Blymel, and Ruth Astel. So you've been in this position before, DD, leading uh, at Ironman. So what's going through your mind at about halfway through the bike? Uh, are you thinking ahead or are you thinking about what's going on behind you? Uh, trying to think about what is ahead and, and given, I think it depends on your strengths as an athlete, but for me, it definitely was make hay while the sun is shining, uh, get as big a cap as I could uh, over some of the, the faster runners. Uh, certainly, Steph Clutterbuck is a solid runner. Uh, we don't necessarily know in this scenario because there is a big difference between racing in the pro field and racing in uh, the age group field, but what kind of run split uh, she might put uh, put forward. Uh, we don't have a sort of an estimated time. We don't have a lot of data to go off of um, because it is so different uh, from it, racing age group to racing pro. Uh, but I think she's really just got to keep her mind focused on where she is right now, uh, not thinking about what's behind her, thinking about her own goals. And as I said before, going through the process, going through procedure, what's my power, what's my heart rate, when's the last time I ate, when's the last time I drank, what's my cadence, just running through that body inventory, keep checking in with yourself to set yourself up for the best run that you can possibly have. Just looks so smooth. I mean, it's easy when you have those long those long levers uh, there to, to push the power and the pedals, but just looks so, so smooth and good, good high cadence for a guy, um, well, I'm just gonna say it, who's a little leggy. He's, yeah, he's a tall guy, I don't know how tall he is, uh, but yeah, he, his position, like I love what he's done with his position. It's he's definitely uh, not, there's not a huge drop. So by that, I mean like from the top of his saddle to where his elbows are, it's not a huge um, drop off. So some athletes you'll see really low. So it actually, where he gets his aerodynamics is from a really, keeping his elbows quite close together and a really good head position um, where it's, and his helmet sitting nicely on his back. Uh, and this works for him and allows him in a good position to, to get in, stay relaxed, get in plenty of oxygen, but and also then be able to generate a lot of power um, for, through the pedals. And obviously, right now, <laughs> I'd love to know what his uh, power meter is showing. Oh, yeah. It must it must be pretty high. It's a big number. A, can, you, can you count that high, Joe? <laughs> Probably not. No, if I can't count over 300, so no, it's definitely more than that. I think for him to put a gap in like that, uh, yeah, he's uh, pushing uh, some pretty impressive power. And then we've got, of course, got the stacked water bottles, one on top of the other there. Let's talk a little bit about that and why why that is that way. Yeah, it's, it's obviously hydration's uh, very, very important. Uh, he's got access to, what, four bottles there. The one on his frame is probably a concentrate. That's probably his own nutrition. Uh, he's probably sipping on that while taking the other bottle cages allow him to take bottles from aid stations and add those in as he replace and he, as he finishes them. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting setup. But uh, yeah, he's obviously worked hard on um, the aerodynamics of it, but also being able to make sure he fuels properly. Because uh, yeah, you're not going to get very far if you're not getting the right calories or the right hydration in. Well, let's talk about hydration and let's talk about this region of Vittoria Gestes, uh, which boasts um, a culture that is rich in wine and influenced by its proximity to the famed La Rioja region. Uh, it's situated amongst the picturesque vineyards and historical wineries, and the city is a haven, haven, Joe, for wine lovers. Uh, it's no surprise that the the food culture in the region is also considered to be one of the best in the country uh, with numerous Michelin-starred restaurants 
chefs uh, and a really, really rich food culture. So there's plenty for athletes and family to do to experience while here. I would suggest uh, waiting on the wine until maybe after the race. Possibly, yeah, it's probably a good idea. Maybe, a little, maybe a little cheeky half glass before just to, to, to unwind yeah, and relax the night before, but uh, <laughs> save the, the, real, the real boozing for after the race. Absolutely. <laughs> well, while we were listening about all the wine of this region, Camworth has moved into fifth place on the road. Uh, moved it, but brought brought with him uh, Brad Weiss, Lopez. So he's managed to get basically get to the front of that group in that last segment. So uh, yeah, Cam really uh, riding riding well uh, and uh, making some uh, good ground up on uh, the front guys. And now he would have his sights set on Matthias uh, Peterson, which is the man on screen right now. Yeah, absolutely. If uh, Peterson had a rear view mirror, he might see, although very, very small in the distance uh, because it's still a handful of minutes back uh, to Cameron Wurf uh, and see who is willing to go with Cameron Wurf as he makes his move further forward. But uh, Matthias Peterson has been sort of in no man's land. He was at one point with uh, the likes of Christian Hogenhog, but Christian put in a big uh, move about 40 kilometers ago, uh, distancing himself from Peterson, who is now uh, in solo in fourth place as we come back to our men's leader. Getting some snacks. Yeah, still staying on top of the hydration and, and, and the fueling side of things, so important. And uh, yeah, he's ticking along nicely here. It's approaching 140 kilometers so less than an hour of riding left for robert callan who's building up quite a, a good lead at this point uh, to think he's actually on the road riding faster than even the likes of cam worth he's building up a quite a good uh lead going into the into the run so maybe up around seven or eight minutes if he stays on with his pace and here we are back <laughs> in the full gas bike course. I just received a stat that's gonna make your jaw hit the table. So maybe put some cushion in there, Joe, because if Callan holds this pace through the closing kilometers of this bike course, I give you one guess as to what his bike time might be. 3.59.59. 3.50. What? <laughs> that's what my statistician wow, is telling me. Okay. That would be a course best by over 10 minutes over Cam Wurf, who is also has to be biking faster than that, perhaps, I think, given the fact that he's closing down on some of the chasers. But Robert Callan is just chewing apart this bike course. Yeah, that, that's, it's incredible. Uh, yeah, let's we'll wait and see. We'll know in less than an hour uh, what that bike split's going to look, by, look uh, like. But uh, here we can see on screen, Kat Matthews looks like she's pedaling with a bit more intent right now. And at last check in the women's field, that lead of Stephanie Clutterbuck, which she'd held from the gun, uh, was down to 136 to Els Visser. Kat Matthews right there and Daniel Blanell and Ruth Astle following this train and but cat matthews she's she's driving the pace here yeah she's, she's driving she's, the pace there's something going on she's definitely uh applied a little bit more pressure and this is a good time to do it like around the hundred what are we at 110 yeah i it's maybe like uh, even a little early but if she's feeling good then great go for it but is it Kat that's driving it? We'll get a, a better shot. I believe that was Kat at the front of it, uh, and it looked like Daniela Blymel was following Els Visser. I did not see the fourth bike of Ruth Astle, think, so it may look like. I think that's uh, Ruth at the back. I think we can. I think they're all there, but they look like they're on the they're on the limit right now. Yeah, could be, could be. Definitely Cat Matthews uh, pushing the pace and trying to make a move here at 110 kilometers. Of course, the next timing split update for the women won't be until 124.2 miles. But at that point, we'll see uh, if this move by Cat Matthews can bring that gap down to mm, a minute or so. And then, you know, again, we're talking about will these women overtake the lead by the end of the bike? Yeah, here we are. Els Visser going with the pace. Uh of uh, Cat Matthews uh, looks super smooth. Yeah, uh, she really does. Very different style to Cat Matthews. Super low cadence, probably around 75 to 80, if that. Um, but yeah, super, super smooth. Uh, very steady on the bike, not wasting any energy at all. And then going with the pace also is Danielle Blemel from Germany, who uh, yes, definitely uh, looks like she's feeling the pinch a little bit. 
Uh, and then closely followed behind her is Ruth Astle. But they're still hanging on, but I feel like the rubber, rubber band's stretching right now, Didi. Yeah, if you make these aggressive moves here at this point, um, you know, if the fatigue is building, uh, it, it could be enough to impact and maybe shake one or two of these uh, chasers from this pack. Yeah, and that's probably what they're trying to trying to do right now is, uh, yeah, spread this out. Obviously, close down the gap to Clutterbuck, but also, uh, yeah, try and uh, sort of soften the legs of the likes of Ruth Astle, Blamel, and uh, as well as Visa. Back to the action here with a man who is lighting a fire behind him on this full gas bike course. You're looking at Robert Callan, who is absolutely crushing this bike and the competition in the process. Yeah, and he, and he looks comfortable doing it. And uh, as we see on screen right now, he is making sure he's staying on top of his fueling. Easy to forget about it when you're, when you're uh, leading a race and uh, really charging, but uh, staying on top of his fueling because, look, out of all the, the swim and bike is uh, some of the strongest in, in the sport, but running wise, he's he's getting there. He's 252 is the fastest he's run for a marathon. So he does need this gap if he wants to win this race. But right now he's building such a good lead and it's exciting to see at the next split what uh, he's actually managed to build. And he's still got another five or six kilometers to even extend that. So uh, let's, let's get a, a, a check on that soon and see uh, what sort of lead he's gonna be starting the, the Hoka run course with. Yeah, he'll be coming up to that last timing mat uh, before he gets into transition. So uh, we can start predicting what that uh, final bike split may be. Of course, we've got the course best uh, from the man on the course, uh, Cameron Wirth, that he posted, I believe that was 4.01 and change. Uh, and we're looking to well surpass that today uh, due to the outstanding bike legs of Robert Callan. Yeah, 4.01.33 by Cam Worth. I think Cam's going to smash that. So Matt Robert Callan's, <laughs> who's uh, outriding Cam by... He's going to smash, smash that. He's going to double smash it. Currently at 152.2 kilometer mark, man on screen is outriding Cam Worth by eight minutes. He's put eight minutes into Cam Worth. Well, Cam's right. He's not a cyclist anymore. He's a triathlete. I want to see it, Cam. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for Tassie. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, look, and Cam, Hogan Hale is actually outsplitting Cam uh, as well. But Cam's the third fastest on. Had pro cycling team to get rid of that guy, Worf. He's just dead weight, huh? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> you need to bring on Hogan Hart and Callan. That's going to come back maybe to Callan bite me. Will get, maybe Callan will get... I'm going to start getting hate mail from Cameron Worf. <laughs> Any, any us will be uh, sending uh, Callan an email. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yes, well, well, I'm not going to go there. But uh, Cam Worth, 401. But I think Cam's going to be well under that. And Callan, as you said, predicted time low 350s. So, That's insane. Yeah, let's let's wait till they actually cross the time mat. Sometimes um, the calculations can be slightly off, but if that's right, and it is, he's averaging 46 kilometers an hour right now. So uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be close to that time, which is phenomenal. And they did say like the roads are immaculate. Like yeah. there's undulation and there's a thousand meters of elevation gain, but no real climb. So I. A couple of times we've seen them break aero, even through the roundabouts, um, on any of the climbs. There's, uh, they basically haven't had to break aero, which and, and is And honestly, is some huge. of that might be deliberate, right? I mean, on a course like this where you can hold aero for the entire time, it's not a bad idea to force yourself to stand up even if the topography doesn't demand it, yeah. right? To stretch out your back change up the muscle groups, even if it's for 10, 15 seconds to just stand up um, and engage differently before tucking back into aero. But um, I think absolutely, uh, while the course doesn't demand it, your back will thank you uh, by yeah. the end of the bike if you if you get up uh, a few times out of aero. Yeah, for sure. Well, he had to break aero there to take that uh, sharp left-hand corner, but yeah, did it with Ease. But here we go. We've got a split at one, uh, 171.8 kilometer mark, uh, averaging 46.15 through uh, at this point in the race. So, yes, eight kilometers to go. So, yeah, 10 minutes potentially. Well, it's, get it's ready an, for it, folks, down in transition because you're watching history being made. Yeah. So, yeah, 10 minutes would, would put him around, yeah, a 353, 354 bike split. So, 
Yes, uh, don't go away because, uh, yeah, in the next 10 minutes, you're going to see history here on the full gas bike course at Ironman Victoria Gastez. We'll take a short break and be right back. Well, definitely now into the city, uh, making his way towards that city centre where they have a, a pretty long run through um, through transition, or sorry, through the along the red carpet until they get to transition. Uh, but certainly he will stop the clock at that dismount line and we will all uh, stand in awe of the performance that he's put out there today. Just extraordinary. Yeah, no, he's definitely, uh, his average speed might drop off a little bit here. He's got a little bit of... Uh, more things to negotiate and uh, a few more corners, but uh, we're getting uh, very, very close to uh, hitting T2 in the next few minutes. So yeah, definitely don't leave the coverage for right now. This is, yeah. uh, we want to see, you might be witnessing uh, one of the best bike splits in triathlon ever. So uh, this is Robert Callan on screen from Sweden, who really applied the pressure towards uh, just after the 100 kilometer mark and managed to uh, get a gap and uh, really uh, extend this lead throughout the last 60 or 70 kilometers. The only man that's been able to sort of go with this sort of pace is in second place right now in Christian Hogenhau from Denmark, who is one of the most aggressive racers I've seen race. Uh, and he's uh, got to sort of hear from him earlier in an interview and the best way, you know, to get the most out of himself is to just go to, go to his limit. And that's when he finds his best. He just doesn't hold back. So he's going to have to that's today. Sort of a, that's sort of a binary scenario there, right? Either it's going to be amazing <laughs> and you're going to do things you've never done before yeah. or it's going to backfire and in that, a big and way. That's why, and I think that's how he races. And yep. uh, he, when he's come away with some podiums in Ironman, that's what he's done. He's put together some amazing bike race. So we're going to be very, very close. Uh, <sighs> What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Clip his feet from his shoes back into aero. He's uh, obviously practiced this many, many times, making sure that he maintains that high average speed while he's uh, figuring out how to get his feet out of his shoes. He'll unclip, get around this um, <laughs> person <laughs> across this in front of him. recreational rider who has no idea what's going no on. No idea that he's doing 50 <laughs> He's just riding off to get his coffee. Yeah. Uh, oh, and goodness. then he'll unclip, he'll get his one foot out, he'll put it on top of the shoe, keep pedaling. Get the, get the speed back up, do the same to the other foot, and then he'll be ready to dismount uh, cleanly and hand off his bike off to one of the volunteer bike catchers before he makes his way into T2 to get his run bag. And uh, yes, commence the Hoka run course. And when we talk about some of the historic times, uh, fastest uh, bike splits across this distance, of course, we don't focus too much on that because distances, mount lines, dismount lines, etc. But we are looking at 354, 59, 355, 22, 357, 45 uh, as some of our fastest uh, in history. And today it will be Robert Callan who dismounts, hands his bike off and waiting for that split, 354, 33. Wow, amazing. That's, uh, that's some biking. Yes. Average speed of 45.94 kilometers an hour. So yes, very, like over 28 miles an hour uh, average speed. So and the thanks to our friends at Wahoo Element Bolt uh, for that split uh, unofficially or officially now, I guess, 354.33, uh, which does put him unofficially at the fastest bike split in Ironman race history. Amazing, Dee Dee. And how's, it, how's he looking running into transition? You know, I'm gonna say the judgment zone, he's looking a little stiff. Um, but he's got time to work it off. As you mentioned, there's a couple of ramps up, a couple of ramps down. Uh, I think he's going to work through this, grab his bag, and, and be off, and uh, we'll see what he can do. Yeah, no, yeah, I would be always reluctant to sit down because I'd maybe never get back up, but all these guys seem to utilize the bench. But, yeah, quickly put on some socks. He's already got the compression wear uh, for on his, on his calves. He's uh, making pretty short work of this, and, uh, yeah, he's... We'll be looking for the next split on the next athlete to see uh, what sort of gap he's made, able to have uh, uh, created for, um, on Hagen, Hagenhau. Yeah, super, super impressive. Um, you've just seen history uh, being made. We'll see how he closes it out, if he can improve uh, those marathon times. Again, that's somewhere where, compared to his competition, uh, he's got some 
I don't want to say some work to do, but he's got some some strengthening to do with that run split um, to see what, um, you know, if he can't put himself in a position to possibly be a podium contender at the Ironman World Championship. I mean, he's certainly got the bike legs for it. So. For sure, and the swim yeah. to, to go through. So, yeah, he's definitely someone that you, you want to watch out for in Kona in October because, um, yeah, his swim will put him right in the thick of it uh, off and here we are with uh, Sam Laidlow. So, uh, do you want to bring everyone up to speed on this one? <laughs> oh, gosh, I almost forgot about this. Uh, Sam Laidlow was assessed a penalty back at, you're going to have to remind me, 69 kilometers. Correct, yep. Uh, the next penalty tent, which he was obligated to stop at, was at 72 kilometers. He failed to stop at that penalty tent. Um, so he has been disqualified from the race, although he had not yet been notified. He will be notified here. Uh, we haven't been talking about him all race because of the disqualification. Um, he does have the right to protest the disqualification. Um, and it finished the race and protest it uh, in retrospect, uh, but it's an uphill battle. But uh, I don't believe that race officials have yet notified him. And certainly based on his actions here and how he's running through transition, he has not yet been told. Uh, I think he will be told as he makes his way here, will be approached by a technical official who will inform him of the bad news. Here we go. Well, he's putting the shoes on. It doesn't indicate that uh, he intends to stop. Yeah. Do you think that was the official? There, I, it might have been. It might, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, as soon as we know, we will let you know. But out on course, Robert Cullen of Sweden with an amazing bike split here today on the full gas bike course. Uh, and uh, pretty pretty slippery transition, DD, after riding that fast. Um, and he's out onto the Hoka run course. There's four laps of 10.5 kilometers. And we will get a split on the next athlete to you as they come through, which is going to be uh, Christian Hogenhauer of Denmark. And we're expecting at least five to six minutes. And waiting for our women's splits to update at 171.8 kilometers. They're actually at 174. So we're just waiting for those to uh, flow through. But here we are. It's Ruth Astle. And by the looks of it, Kat Matthews, who have distanced themselves from mm -hmm. Els Visser, unless she's on the front. Uh, but it looks like Els Visser um, is back a bit, as well as Steph Clutterbuck uh, and Daniela Blymel. Yeah, Ruth Astle really doing it more than her fair share of work on the on the front now. Kat Matthews definitely been aggressive and tried to push the pace a few times in the last third of this bike course. But yeah, oh, here we go. Now we can see Vissa. Yeah, Vissa's yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, she's there. Yeah, so uh, some really strong riding heel. So Blamel uh, looks like she's uh, lost a bit of time as so uh, Stephanie Clutterbuck. Um, so we'll get a time check and see how much they've actually lost as Matthews comes back around and starts put, putting on the pressure and Ruth Astle just has to uh, let it go by. It's, it's back funny, 12 metres it, and then just settle back in. Yeah, it's funny because Cat Matthews was playing a little bit of cat and mouth with, El, with Els Visser there for a while, mm. um, who was putting in some surges and then Cat would answer. And now it's Ruth Astle uh, who is sort of... I don't want to say poking the bear, but going back and forth here to keep the pressure on here in the closing kilometers of this full gas bike course. Yeah, no, they're, they're definitely not holding back over these closing uh, kilometers, but we're at, <clears throat> excuse me, 175 kilometers in the women's, so five kilometers left, seven minutes, seven and a half, eight minutes max until they... Uh, get to T2. And again, when we look back at course best uh, for this bike course, it belongs to Els Visser from 2023 with 4.41.17. So we'll see what these women are able to turn in today. As we watch our women's race leader, it is Ruth Astle in to transition first. How patient was Ruth Astle through the opening Fantastic, yeah. four fifths of this bike course um, and then really went sort of tit for tat with with Kat Matthews there and now will be the first woman off of the bike uh, waiting for that split to update for race leader Ruth Astle. Well Achilles and uh, calf held up all right that's always the first <laughs> thing is stepping off that bike and how's yep. it gonna be yeah she's moving 
pretty well. Good uh, foot speed there, not even a hint of a limp. No. Yeah. No, it's a uh, it's good, good sign so far for Ruth Astle. And to finish off a bike that strongly and put a gap on Kat. Uh, She's only seven seconds ahead of Kat, so let's but not... But still, yeah, it's, it's, exactly. it's a psychological it's... Uh, blow. So, yeah, uh, Wahoo Element Bolt official time for Ruth Astle, 4.29.54 for the 112-mile, 180-kilometre bike. And both women uh, beating our course best that was previously held by Els Visser at 4.41.17. So uh, another extraordinary performance from our women on the bike today, not just the men showing us how it's done, the women, extraordinary bike splits today. And cheers to Ruth Astle, who's had a really rough go of it the past several months after a 12th place finish at the Ironman World Championship. Uh, she's really, really struggled uh, to get herself together, uh, battling injury up and down, uh, calf and Achilles flare. So great to see her back. And so dominant, we'll see what she can do on this run as we watch Daniela Blymel, uh, who I'm going to say that's a little bit of a grimace, not a smile, mm -hmm. as she makes her way down this ramp. It's a downhill ramp, so that's a little unfair for race organizers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but look at them they're like chit-chatting here, good friends. We're gonna have a couple uh, of tea. Talking about how it how it's going, and uh, yeah, I think uh, both women pretty pretty chuffed with their performances so far. Uh, Kat Matthews, I believe, racing as conservatively as she can to get the job done here after the disqualification at Hamburg. She's looking to re-establish her position, perhaps on top of the leaderboard in the Pro Series. Uh, but do it without uh, much of a detriment. She's got some other races in short order coming up here. And of course, Ruth Astle's goal uh, is to get that qualifying slot for the Nice uh, World Championships and get her first points on the board for the year. So hoping that calf and Achilles for both of these women holds up. Um, yeah. I think Kat's injury is more in the rear view mirror and less of a concern than it is for Ruth Astle. But uh, here the two Brits head out together onto the Hoka Marathon course. Yeah, that was great to see. Uh, obviously, good friends. I know they uh, did a few pre-race swims together and checked out the course. And uh, yeah, obviously, uh, both representing uh, Great Britain. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, a very friendly uh, T2 uh, transition by these two. And uh, yeah, I feel like Kat even nearly waited for Ruth so they could run out together. I'm not sure how long they'll run together, but uh, this is a pretty special moment for both of them. Yeah, and, and again, I want to, my internal dialogue wants to plead with Ruth Astle to be conservative don't try necessarily to go with cat matthews here uh the excitement you know hey if she's feeling good and can put together a great marathon i just don't put her in the same camp as cat matthews when it comes to running so she's just got to sort of close her eyes to cat matthews and let cat do cat things and focus on getting herself to the finish line Again, as Davy G would advise, race your race, Ruth Astle, and you will have everything you wanted from this day, um, securing that uh, that qualifying slot. But don't get don't get sucked in by Cat Matthews. <laughs> no, yeah, she's uh, a really nice mover. Though. She's just very economical, good good uh, position, relaxed up body, good rotation. Yeah, she looks very economical the way she moves. And uh, just take note right now because I think she's moving really really well. And it's, we'll just see every lap at that same spot and see how see how she goes. Uh, here is Steph Clutterbuck in off of the bike. Uh, led the race for so, so very mm. long. Uh, she comes in to transition three minutes 12 back of Ruth and Kat. Um, and just about two minutes 10 back of Els Visser and Daniela Blymel. Sorry, Els was a minute back. Uh, Steph is 312 back and Daniela Blymel alone at 50 seconds back. So the women spread out a little bit. Although here comes Els Visser back on Daniela Blymel. Yeah, okay. No, it's a really close race. I just wonder, like, obviously every second matters. Since I've been watching this year, everything does. It does. Yes. Everything's tightened up. Like the 70.3s, the Ironmans, the they are really close. Had we been just complacent before saying, hey, I'm here, it doesn't really matter. Are we Are we really, we're really embracing the every second matters. We really are, because, <laughs> well, I man, yeah, put on an amazing series and a great concept. And I don't know if it's just in the back of their minds, that, but the racing is just, you can throw, throw a blanket over the top five men and women. Like, it's crazy. Uh, and they've been racing for uh, already like nearly six or well, five hours. Yeah, five and a half hours. So, yeah. Crazy. And boy, Kat Matthews is moving really, really yeah. well. I like her turnover. Uh, I like the strength of her stride. She looks at. She looks. She looks great. Yeah. 
No, it looks super relaxed. Seems to have found a rhythm really quickly, uh, which is hard to do after being holding TT position for, what was it, 429. What amazing bike split, yep. um, by the way. But, uh, yeah, looks super smooth and just going about her work. Els Visser, again, super impressive. She looks great. Uh, she gave up a little bit of time at the end of the bike that might call, you know, call into question how recovered she is um, from a race just a week ago, but is uh, off and running, has gone past Danielle Blymel and sits in third place currently. And an update in the men's 11.3 kilometers. Uh, so Robert Callan still leads our men. Uh, Christian Hogenhal, 440. So taking a little bit of time. But what we're seeing is at uh, Antonio Benito Lopez, 8 minutes, back to me on his shoulder, and Bradley Wise just behind. So it's really, action's really holding up here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. As right now you look at women's leader, this is uh, Kat Matthews as we take a look at our Morton top three fastest transition time for our women today. It was Kat Matthews at 2.07, Ruth Astle at 2.15, and Els Visser matching Ruth Astle at 2.15 as we check in with Ruth Astle, who's moving very, very well. So I, I ask you this, and, and it was a while ago, but coming from a place of experience where you won your first Ironman coming off an Achilles issue where you had minimal run miles. At what point is that playing on your mind at this stage of the race if you're Ruth Astle? Are you thinking about it or are you just thinking, hey, calf feels good, let's just run and forget about it? Ideally. Yeah, I think... I mean, I don't get, see a hitch in her giddy up, no, so it I looks like it's not bothering through, her. Yeah, I think get through the first 10 kilometers um, and then you probably good and then just the pain of the actual whole Ironman probably uh, overshadows anything in any way but yeah I, I can't see it uh, hitching her stride which is a good sign and the way it she hit the ground uh, dismounting the, the bike yeah I feel like you can't do that unless you're your Achilles and calf is feeling pretty good. Oh uh, no, unofficially down on the course, we're getting word that uh, men's bib number seven Arthur Horsall is out uh, one of our good runners, apparently not able to put it together on the day today. So uh, bib number M7, Arthur Horsau, mm. unable to complete the race today. So to our French friends out there, uh, bad news for him, but we will see him back um, someplace else at another time. Yeah, like it was, he didn't have the best swim. Uh, I thought he'd be a little bit further up and it just makes it hard because you're constantly, you're just chasing on the bike and maybe it's just left nothing in the tank and uh yeah it's just one of those days but uh, yeah he'll be back uh, already got a qualification for yep. kona so yes. he'll have to decide if he wants to have another dip at an ironman between now and kona and uh or maybe just one uh later in the year because plenty of options for racing uh it's especially as part of this ironman world series but robert robert callan here on screen he's yeah he's doing pretty well like i think he's holding a, a good pace um but I don't know if you might get a fright if he sees um, a group of Weiss <laughs> and Lopez and McNamee. And here Galloping we go. Galloping towards him. Here's, here's Dave out for a Sunday run with Benito. Um, yeah, these two great pairing together, right? Uh, to push each other on. They're, they're pretty evenly matched, you would yeah, say. Yeah, you look at like the runs they've, they've posted. Um, yeah, I'd say. And Dave, yeah, he's... He's comfortable in this position. He, he runs a lot with the ITU group uh, in uh, Girona and constantly posting images and videos of him trying to run with uh, Vincent Louis and, uh, and uh, yeah, struggle, hating life. But it's obviously got him in good shape for this run today. Back to the action here. Here is Christian Hogenhag, uh, who is running down uh, his own uh, qualifying slot for the Ironman World Championship in Kona, currently sitting in second place overall, uh, trying to catch Robert Kalanen. He's 90 seconds back and sits another uh, 95, 105 seconds, uh, minute 15 ahead of uh, Antonio Benito Lopez and David McNamee. So he's he's running strong. Uh, he's being outpaced a little bit by the guys behind him, but mm -hmm. also has the carrot in front of him to chase. Yeah, he does. Uh, but they, they are closing fast, McNamee and Lopez on Hogan Hart. But he's, right, right now, he's on like a career best marathon. Uh, yeah. His best time, well, he has run a two... 
40 at Mar at uh, Hamburg, if that's if that's correct. Um, but mostly he's like a 249, 250 guy. So he's on 244 pace right now. He's and he's having, loving the crowd. That, like I love the fact day. that he's he's high five in the crowd. He's really engaging with them. He's using that energy. Uh, oftentimes, if you if you you know, give a little out to the crowd. They'll give it back to you mm -hmm. in spades. And, and I like to see him high-fiving the, the crowd there. Uh, it's great to see. And it's just a source of energy um, for him uh, that's going to really, really help. It seems like a small and sort of trivial thing, but it really does help out there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it will come even more into play in the closing stages of this race. Uh, and that's where you really got to use the crowd's energy to get you to that line. But uh, here we go through 20.5. So we've got... Hogan Howe at 131, and then Lopez and McDemy closing pretty quickly. Um, but uh, it's going to take a few more uh, timing hats until we see them getting past. But Robin Callan over halfway point now, uh, 21.6 kilometres. Pace has dropped off a little bit, uh, 437 through that last uh, short segment. Um, but still, as I said, he's still moving. Uh, it's just, this needs to pick it up again as we get a quick glimpse of McNamee and of the, Lopez of there. Of the twins. Yeah. <laughs> They're really locked in, yeah. yeah. Like, I think, um, yeah, these, are, these guys are going to push each other all the way to get back to the front of this race, I think. Uh, one of them will get, I think, back to the front of this race. Uh, I'm not sure which one right now. Um, so anyway, here we go. Back with Robert Callan. Still moving, moving well. Um, obviously left it a lot out on the bike, but uh, still running a, a good pace and um, looking to start, try and fend off these uh, guys uh, trying to hunt him down. I'll, you know, I'll be curious to, to get a comment from him after the race uh, just to see... You know, did that bike feel otherworldly for him? Like, was was his plan to be really aggressive, even if it cost him ultimately on the marathon, just to see where that tipping point is? Uh, sometimes that's, you know, when you're sitting in a position of relative comfort with a qualifying slot to the world championship, why not do that sort of case of one study and say, how hard can I bike and what's it going to cost me? Um, or, you know, is this just the, the net result of, of, you know, biking that fast or was he intending to be as aggressive as he ended up being on the bike? Yeah, who knows? Well, I know one thing that uh, people will know his name when he gets to Kona. Oh, for sure. They'll be watching him on the bike. He'll be one of the, the guys to watch on the bike, especially with his, his swim. There's no reason why. I don't think he's a like an ambush, a swimmer, or, but he's definitely like in that, he's like a Tim O'Donnell swimmer, like always going to be up in that first sort of like front of the pack, first, like fifth or sixth out. But do they, do they pay attention to him because he is a race agitator? Uh, if the best he can run is 250, is he really a factor necessarily? Uh, I think he, more that he will be add horsepower to someone like a, a laid low uh, yeah. or that, like you can't let lay low and him and a hand, handful away get, um, get, uh, get away at, in Kona because it's just going to add another person to, to that, to the mix. And meanwhile, Kat Matthews, our women's leader, continues to stride away four minute and 10 uh, second Ks through that last couple of K segments. So her pace uh, holding strong here. You can tell she's getting a little, she's getting a little pink in the cheeks, but I think is just a little indicative of the fact that the temperature, the barometer is rising. Uh, temperature is getting a little bit warmer out there, but uh, doesn't seem to be bothering her at all. She's holding pace just fine. Yeah, she's just jump on the back of uh, Cam Worth there, who just snuck, <laughs> snuck by her. Just give him a little fanny pad as she goes by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cam's obviously looks like he's still in the hunt, and uh, and and looks like he's moving pretty well. But yeah, Cat just looks like she could do this this pace all day. No, there's no strain, just really covering the ground nicely. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, she uh, seems very, very, very comfortable at this stage, and it would be very she's hard just for someone. Dealt with, she's dealt with so, so much yep. from, you know, obviously the much-talked-about uh, crash a couple of years ago, uh, the, the, the misfortune at the Ironman World Championship a year ago where she just wasn't having the day um, and, and really 
caught her on the back foot to then the disqualification in Hamburg, the injury, the calf injury she suffered at the beginning of the year. Um, but she just moves forward relentlessly. Like it just, it doesn't affect her confidence. It doesn't seem to impact her psyche at all. Um, there's so much belief there in her abilities. And when she puts it together, man, what is possible. Um, she's been on the podium, uh, second place at Lochte at the 70.3 World Champs. Uh, we haven't really mentioned her second place finish at uh, St. George yeah. World Champs. Um, but I, I, that course is, yeah, a strong person's course. Like as yeah. will Nice be, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, That's has she thinking. set herself up potentially to, um, I think, be a, a factor and a real threat to stand atop the podium? Um, she's going to have some company, Lucy Charles Barkley, deciding that she actually is going to pursue uh, the World Championship in Nice this year. Um, a lot of great, you know, Laura Phillip uh, on the podium last year. She'll be a contender. Andy Haug, always um, a threat. So, you know, we'll see how it plays out. But Kat Matthews definitely putting herself uh, in the conversation. Yeah, look at this crowd, Dee Dee. Yeah. Amazing. Like, so early on, you got the problem, the, the problem sometimes is you get too carried away and she's not even anywhere near halfway she's like just finishing the uh, first lap um, so yeah you, you can sort of nearly get too caught up in the moment and then you you, you you sort of lose a little bit of energy later in the race but right now she's milking it and here we're taking a look at Sam Laidlow. Now we're getting a lot of questions, a lot of comments. We see ya, we hear ya, here's what happened. Sam Laidlow once again was assessed a penalty at kilometer 60, 69. 69. Um, rules stipulate that you must check in at the next penalty tent. That is the rule. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are in the course. The rule is you must stop at the next penalty tent because it serves a great advantage if you're in the lead pack, if you stay there until the end of the bike and choose to serve your penalty there. You do not have a choice as an athlete where you serve your penalty. You serve your penalty at the next penalty tent, which was at kilometer 71, 72. Correct. It was a couple of kilometers away. He neglected to stop at the penalty tent. He did not stop. Rules also stipulate if you do not stop at the next penalty tent, you will be disqualified. When he did not stop at the penalty tent, referees disqualified him. He was not notified of his disqualification until T2. Uh, at T2, he was notified by a technical official that he was disqualified, and he responded to the technical official saying, I intend to protest the disqualification. So he is out finishing the race and will protest in front of a committee at the conclusion of the race. The committee will hear his protest, deliberate, and a decision will, made, will be made, we're told, anywhere from one to a handful of hours after his protest is filed. He has 60 minutes to notify officials of his intent to protest, which he must most certainly must do. Sam Laidlow is in a position now as defending Ironman world champion. He does not need to qualify for the world championship. He simply needs to validate and finish the race. So his options are limited. If, he is, if the disqualification holds up and he does not win the protest, he is already locked out of Ironman Lake Placid, which happens a week from now. There is the option of Ironman Frankfurt, although that list has not been disclosed. And it is, you know, curious whether or not he put his name on there as a hedge. Uh, but if not, that list is closed as well. And so his opportunity to validate his slot would be gone. So there is a lot on the line. He is going to protest and we'll have to wait and see what the technical committee decides on the protest. He, oh, Hogan he Hobbin looking over the shoulder. And so, Br Brad is tough. He's one of, here we oh, go. Oh, here we go. Here we, we go. Brad Weiss on the shoulder of Christian Hogenhag. Little fanny pat. There it goes. Wow. Brad. Oh, golly. Yeah, you saw Hogenhag got the heads up uh, that he's there. And there goes Bradley Weiss. So 
really what this means right now. So David McNamee, by the way, through 39.3 kilometers, he's four minutes down of Ante Antonio Benito Lopez. Um, but the real sort of race within the race and part of why we're getting so excited here is uh, Brad Weiss really chasing uh, that Ironman World Championship qualifying slot, as is Christian Hogenhaug. Um, and Hogenhaug just not able, the one-time leader of the race, just not able to hold it together in these last... 10 kilometers, Brad Weiss um, it worked down a two minute gap uh, to him in the last, you know, couple of Ks. So uh, Bradley Weiss definitely showing that grit and determination oh, and that we've, for it. we've seen for him. Uh, he's going to be in a world of oh, hurt. Brad, yeah, Brad, I've never seen him like that before. I mean, Every I muscle in his whole body yeah. was like locked up, but he's still, he's such a talent. Like, in my heart of hearts, I want to see Hogan Howe come back by him. Like I want to yeah. see them battle all the way to the finish this line, but uh, what, a, what a race. Oh my goodness. Yeah, very, very exciting. And yeah, no, they're both just throwing everything they've got at it. And uh, yeah, Hogan Hart, look, full credit to him. He's, he did everything right. Yep. Well, Brad Weiss is also very good at turning himself well, inside yeah, out. Well, yeah, he does specialize <laughs> in that. But, it's yeah, my this, specialty. This, this is uh, yeah, an amazing performance all around. These guys are leaving nothing out there. Uh, zips up, zips yeah, up the finally, fist pumps. Here we go. We're starting, starting to enjoy to it. Yeah, yeah, less than a kilometer to go looks, here. Looks like he's uh, running three-minute For three Antonio carries. Benito Lopez from Spain. What a way to win your first Ironman in your home country in front of this amazing crowd. Look at the time he's going to come in. We're at 7.35 and change right now, and he's in the closing a uh, few hundred meters of this course. Amazing performance here by Antonio Benito Lopez. Uh, third place last year in Ironman Portugal, and now it looks like he's going to come away with his first ever Ironman victory in the Pro Series at and Ironman Victoria. Just Gastez. because we've been referencing them, swim and bike, I will acknowledge uh, course best time across the marathon belonged to Nick Castellin uh, back in 2022 with 2.43.28. Uh, we'll likely see that go today. Uh, yeah. Yeah, should. But should do. Yeah, it's good. he's going to be just under 2.40, I think, by my calculation, but I've been wrong before. But uh, yeah, and the course record, Dee Dee, did you did you see that one? Uh, uh, overall uh, course best seven. Well, that's unusual. Yeah, that's unusual. It's Set. listed at seven twenty eight twenty seven by an age group athlete yeah, in twenty twenty one, but then no the highlighted number is seven fifty two fifty by Nick Castellini. So this course record has gone seven thirty six and change right now. And here he goes, makes that U-turn. Everybody else got to turn and do another lap. But it's Antonio Benito Lopez who becomes your Ironman Victoria Guestes champion. First time Ironman champion. Secures himself a qualifying slot for the Ironman World Championship in Kona in October. What a performance for him. Yeah, amazing. And you can see the emotion all over. Just, yeah, can't contain it. He really uh, had a poker face until that last <laughs> hundred. And, and now he gets to celebrate this amazing performance and we're checking in with the Wahoo Element rival a 237-57 run split from Antonio Benito Lopez of Spain to run away with this race and come away the champion of Victoria Castez. You know, it's funny, he, he's been in the mix. We didn't talk about him a whole lot because he was mixed up in a bunch of different groups, both in the swim, on the bike. Uh, it wasn't until the second half of this marathon he got paired up uh, pretty much out of transition with David McNamee, they both set the pace. And when he distanced himself, he gapped McNamee by about 15 seconds. It's almost like he got the bit in the teeth uh, and he absolutely went for it. And when he got past Castellin, man, that was it. Yeah, absolutely. That was it. He just went for it. And uh, here's uh, Dave. Well, even when he's absolutely depleted, he still is a beautiful runner. And uh, yeah, he'll be very proud of his performance. This is what he came here to do. Obviously would have loved to have come away with a win, but I think he's going to be very, very happy with his performance today. And uh, yeah, an amazing uh, race uh, for him today. And he's going to come, like, look at the points he's going to accumulate. Uh, we'll see that as, we, as he crosses under the finishing arch. But a great way to open his uh, Pro Series account as well. Yeah, I mean, every reason to be super pleased. Um, sure, he would have liked to have stayed with... Uh, Antonio Benito Lopez as the two ran shoulder to shoulder and 
potentially take it all the way to the finish line, but uh, not very many things for David McNamee to hang his head about here. Yeah, and here we go. Our second place finisher, David McNamee from Scotland, finishing second in Victoria. Oh, I'm in Victoria Gastez. Congratulations, Dave McNamee. Done. <laughs> yeah. Acknowledgement of the crowd there. Takes the handshake. He looks a little bit wobbly there. Uh, congratulations to his competitors as well. Um, and now we will wait for third place. Will it be Cameron Murph? Will it be Bradley Weiss? Could have a sprint finish on our hands. Yeah, Steven. could could be. Could yeah. be some cramping. <laughs> so Dave McNamee came away with a 2:42.03. So a really solid run, especially it, uh, fading a little bit in that last uh, lap. Looks like uh, at 41.1 uh, kilometers, uh, Cam Worf has nudged by Bradley Weiss, uh, leads him by about 15 seconds. Um, so he is uh, currently in third place. We would anticipate uh, seeing him next, but Bradley Weiss holding off uh, Christian Hogan Haug and will uh, secure that uh, Kona qualifying slot for the World Championship in October. Bradley Weiss just needs to get himself across the line. Christian Hogenhaug, what a hard-fought battle. Yep. Uh, he's still out there battling, sitting in fifth place. As we check in with Kat Matthews, our women's leader, who now enjoys a three minute and 36 second lead over Els Visser. So she continues to eke further and further away as she faces uh, about 12 kilometers left to go. So she's going to finish out this lap, have one more to go for yep. Kat Matthews. Yeah, about 50, around 50 minutes or so to uh, to go for Kat at this pace. So like she's looking fantastic. And uh, But yeah, throwing back to Els Visser, she's still 3.36 back, slowed a little bit, uh, and there's a little, the gap's extended, but still not enough for Kat Matthews to just uh, relax and just uh, chill out. She's still got to hold this pace through to the end. But I, I believe that this momentum is is going to make her feel better about when Els was sort of trying to reel her in, brought yeah. her to almost two minutes. Um, and um, yeah, so now she's enjoying the fact that that number's getting bigger rather than smaller, which is what you want to see when you've got 10, uh, 10 plus kilometers left to go. Followed by Bradley Weiss. Here's the replay of Cam Worf across the line. Actually looking fresh as a daisy. Well done, Cam Worf. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he comes across unofficial race time, 7.43.16. Uh, and then Bradley Weiss followed him in uh, in fourth place. Marathon time, uh, 7.45. Uh, sorry, 2.45.11 for a 7.43.51. And here we welcome Christian Hogenhaug. Here we are, back to the Cat Matthews show. I mean, Ironman Vittoria Gestez, where Cat Matthews, uh, since she took to this Hoka Marathon course, has continued um, to really run strong and run confident and run away from Els Visser. She now sits four minutes, 44 seconds. Oh, sorry, that's pace per kilometer. I lied, 421 ahead of Els Visser and eight minutes, 22 seconds ahead of Ruth Astle. So um, Cat Matthews just getting the job done. Yeah, no, she's uh, look, just looked like this the whole way. She's de definitely working for it as the temperature heats up a little bit. But as we've seen, uh, at stop at the personal needs uh, station a couple of times and make sure she's getting on that extra that electrolyte that she's got tailored to her with maybe some extra salt. And uh, yeah, but on shot here, Els Visser still looking great. Yeah, um, she really does. It's just her posture is so good. Yeah. Uh, exquisite posture, just very, very... Uh, upright, not bent over at all. Great arm carriage, just driving forward. Just, again, she has so much racing in her legs in general, not to mention a full distance just a week ago. So the fact that she's in this position to me is still pretty astounding. She's a, she's a tough woman. Um, she's got the mindset for it um, and, and really turning in a great, great performance here. She just, it was just a little much to, to hold pace with Kat Matthews on this marathon. Yeah, well, it's your third full distance race, or uh, fourth, sorry, and then a bunch of 70.3s thrown in there for good measure, and your season starts uh, back in New Zealand in January. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot to ask, so I'm sure maybe she's got a, a good, uh, some vacation planned after this where she can just let her body heal and, and recover, but... Um, no yeah. emails. No, probably maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see her in Lake Placid next week. And then Frankfurt. Yeah. <laughs> no women no. in Frankfurt, oh, but no. maybe, well, she'll she'll just, maybe she'll, she'll do, race age group. Just, <laughs> just to get a training day in. It's, it's amazing. Oh, I think one eye many is uh, enough for me, but uh, yeah, they're... they're but uh, she's having a great day. And here's Ruth uh, taking care of hydration. She, look, she's been very smart about this. 
She's into the last 10 kilometers of the run. She's it's just, you, she, you can tell it's getting hot out there. Oh, come on, Ruth. Timing chip rubbing on the Achilles. Uh, oh, Ruth, come on. Come on, Ruth. Come on, Ruth. Okay, it, walking it, it off, it's okay. There she goes, moving again. I don't know if anybody knows which Achilles or calf was bothering her. Um, message me, let me know if it's the right. I might be slightly concerned. Just with the adjustment there in the shoe, is it bothering her? Yeah, Tough I to tell. I, I don't know which leg it was. Kinesio tape or something. Is that on her right foot? But yeah, she definitely stopped and adjusted something on her right. But she's, she's back she's moving. moving. Well. Yeah. She doesn't seem to be favoring it. Maybe I'm looking for things that just aren't there, but oh, just the battle she's like, the effort she's put out here today, and she's so close. Yeah. So close. She's She has a comfortable gap, so she doesn't need to overrun at this point. Um, last timing check, which of course, um, she's got a six minute lead on Daniela Blymel uh, with about 10 kilometers to go, so she's got a comfortable gap. Doesn't need to put the foot on the gas necessarily, just needs to preserve and protect. Yeah, but we, if you're having problems, eight, eight, nine kilometers seems a very long way. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, she's hanging in there, but hopefully uh, she's managing it and get through the finish line in one piece. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to overread into it. She walked the aid station. She, it's, it's. There's no doubt. It's warm out there, and the athletes are, are kind of overheating a little bit with with less than 10k to go in an Ironman. The fact that she adjusted her shoe, I don't want to put too much stock in that necessarily. That there's something necessarily going wrong, other than the fact that she's a little hot and took a second to adjust her shoe. So, yeah. um, she she does look fine. She looks even. Um, the turnover is still good. She does not look like she's favoring uh, either side to me at this point. So hopefully, knock wood, that calf and Achilles is 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 holding up for her as we come back and check in with Cat Matthews. Yeah, and here we are back with Cat, still looking super smooth, just getting it done. This is uh, looks like the nicer part of the course, especially in the heat of the day, uh, onto the gravel path in the shade of the trees, making the most of it. Um, yeah, got plenty. Of, a little bit quieter out here, a bit more breeze uh, away from all the buildings. Yeah. So, but yeah, she's really counting down the kilometers now. Uh, she's at 35.1 at the last split. So coming up on uh, about seven, a little bit less than seven kilometers to go. So and 30 I, minutes. Like, again, I have to say 414, 410, 414, 420. Very consistent. Personal needs table, 440, 410, 415, 420. Just so, so consistent and so impressive. What impressive work from Cat Matthews. Well, she talked about that in uh, her little interview that we got to see, that she sort of, she just goes out and executes her plan. She knows what numbers she can hit on the bike. She knows what heart rate zone she needs to hit on the bike. Same on the run. And she just does that and sort of lets everything sort of flow. Um, and doesn't try and chase anything. She knows, okay, this is what I can do, I'll do it. And then if there's something more at the end or if she's in a battle, then sure, you forget about those zones and you just you just race. But she's just doing that today and it's working out great for her. As So for this lady here on screen, Els Visser, uh, the Dutch lady is uh, having, a, having a great race here. Yeah, really super impressive, especially considering the volume of racing she's been doing. Uh, the travel she's been doing uh, is is super duper impressive that she's still holding up this well and looking this well this deep into the race. Yeah, no, really, you said it before, a very good posture, a good, uh, just moves really nicely and very uh, efficient uh, running. Pretty impressive uh, knee carriage at, at this late stage of yeah. a marathon. And just very, yeah, it's very, very symmetrical um, and look, we talk, keep commenting on about how many races she's done, but she just like hits the ground nicely, and there's yeah, she's just well uh, good biomechanics. Which, when you've got good biomechanics, you can you can race a little bit more. Like you're not susceptible yeah. to injury, you're not getting as much yep. la lateral stress and uh, and stresses on, on the tissue. So yeah, you can back up uh, differently. So yeah, it really depends on on the athlete. Uh, but here we have Ruth. 
She's yeah, she's taking on, she's taking off the kilometers, and that's all she needs to do right now. As you said, got plenty of gap on uh, fourth place, but really, I think she just the main goal is she said it is to get get to the finish line in one piece, and she could actually slip back a couple of spots because the two women in front of her already have yep. qualifications. So if it's that bad, she knows. Okay, well, I'll give up third if I can not go and mess myself up for the well, next but three that's, months. That's what it says to me is that maybe the calf and the Achilles isn't actually the issue. Like, we got overly cautious there when we saw her bend over and yeah. adjust and thought, oh, she sort of shook out that leg a little bit. But that, that could be nothing, right? I don't even know which leg it was. Um, so I don't want to overanalyze and read too much into that. Um, and, and again, every second matters. So she wants to throw points up on the board. She's missed the first six months of racing. Yeah. Um, and this is her, her series debut. So uh, she's got a lot of work cut out for her if she wants to factor into um, certainly the top 10, if that's even possible mathematically at this stage, um, but, but certainly to factor into some of the bonus payouts at the end of the year being in that top 50. Um, and she's got to hold it together. And so she, she knows that. She can't blow her whole season just for the sake of one race. So uh, I have to believe that she actually is okay. And it's just fatigue at 32 kilometers into 42.2 kilometer run when you are a little short on run miles. Yeah, I agree. But you got to think, a Konus, uh, sorry, a world championship slot unlocks an extra thousand points. So it's huge. And that's going to be a big difference at the end of the year. Yeah. The athletes that do get those spots and have a good day and finish and have a, even not their best performance. It unlocks yep. that potential earning of an extra thousand points. Yep. And uh, I mean, the other thing about this series that's great is that we have athletes who are by and large 70.3 specialists who have no, no intention of racing a full distance race. They're at a disadvantage and I don't think we'll see any of them factor into the top 10, but they're all going to get a nice bonus payout at the end of the year by virtue of being in the top 50 yeah. and never racing a full distance race. So if Ruth Astle can throw together two more solid Ironmans, like she'll she'll get that bonus payout um, that that she's looking for and and that's what's that's what's great about the series. Yeah, it is really. And I bet you'll see a couple of 70.3 specialists go, "Oh, okay, I'll do one Ironman just to, just to get a few more points." Will you though? We might. Just at the end of the year, just an Ironman <laughs> uh, WA or something, I don't know, something that just gets a few more no points. No pro race at Ironman oh, no, WA. No, no pro race, so but they'll find 3? something. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, more of that after this short commercial break where we come back and bring Cat Matthews home with a win at Ironman Victoria Gastez. Don't go away. We'll be back. And as we're back from our quick break there, we're following Els Visser, our second place female. She is now through that 41. Oh, sorry, I take it back. She is not through 41.1 kilometers, but she is making her way back to the city center towards the finish line at 39.3 kilometers, 649 back to Cat Matthews, who is now safely across the line. Ruth Astle sits at 1305 back and still waiting for Daniela Blymel at 39.3 kilometers uh, to see if Ruth might be able to hold on to that final spot on the podium, but we can see the grit of the teeth now. I can't imagine the hurt in the legs. If you can imagine the last 10K of, of any Ironman triathlon and, and how much those quads are just yelling at you and what this woman has been through in the last week with another full distance race just a week ago is really extraordinary. Yeah, it really is, DD. You can see the determination across her face right now. and. Yeah, she's longing to get to that uh, last checkpoint, 41.1. And here we see a replay of Cap Matthews coming across the line to take the victory in a in very impressive fashion. 55 minute swim, 430 bike, and a 250 by 255, 440 run. Amazing. And into the finish stadium here, acknowledging the crowd. They've been so supportive of every single athlete out there all day long as they now find their way to the finish line. An emotional finish for Els Visser, who, my goodness, to back up what she's done just a week ago and, and come at it again, just an extraordinary performance as she is on the red carpet. We'll come home, your 2024 Ironman Victoria Gastis. Second place for Els Visser from the Netherlands to the three hours yeah. so and that just comes down to consistency so here's a replay of Ruth Astle finishing and coming across the line as our third uh, female in today Ironman Victoria Gastez
And welcome back to the finish line at Ironman Vitoria Gestes. What a day it's been, Joe Gambles. Oh, yeah, it's, that was an epic battle across the women's and the men's field today and amazing performances all around and, and course records. Uh, yeah, the records books got rewritten today, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, from outstanding performances and that like glass uh, swim uh, to the record-setting performance from uh, um, Callan. Callan on the bike uh, to course bests. Uh, almost across the board, swim, bike, and run across both genders. Well, when you have a part of the pro series, uh, it's going to bring the very best athletes, and they all performed at their very best today. So, yeah, amazing, amazing to watch. It's a privilege to, to be part of it. Yeah, so many great achievements uh, from a first-time Ironman winner for our men uh, to uh, world championship slots, hard-fought world championship slots as we take a look at our men's top 10 results. It was Antonio Benito Lopez from Spain who takes home his first Ironman win and 5,000 points. David McDemie, Cameron Worf, Bradley Weiss, Christian Hogenhog, James Teagle. Matthias Pedersen, Robert Callan, uh, that amazing bike, Sten Gosemores, and Thomas Bremore as well, uh, rounding out the top 10. And as we take a look at what happens to the point standings, incredibly, Matt Hansen stays atop <laughs> the leaderboard, uh, but it's Sten Ghostowers uh, who moves up 15 spots into second place. Jackson Laundry down a spot. Other big mover on the day, Robert Callan, off that record-setting performance on the bike. He moves up 25 spots uh, with Perrin uh, Pamphrel moving in uh, to seventh place, up 22 spots. Yeah, some big moves and shakers there today, DD. And then we take a look at our women's uh, top 10 results. It was Kat Matthews, uh, Els Visser, Ruth Astel, Daniela Blymel, Simone Mitchell, Katerina Wolf, and Jana Uderstadt with Ruth Astel, um, Simone Mitchell, and Katerina Wolf securing uh, qualifying slots for the Women's World Championship in Nice. Yeah, che checked a lot of boxes. And in the point standing, we have Maya Sarge Nilsson still leading uh, with 11,000, uh, just over 11,000 points. Kylie Stimson, Danielle Bumel, Big mover. Yep. Up 10 spots into third. Cat Matthews, huge. Uh, <laughs> 10,000 points from two races. Up to fourth. Fenella Langridge, Jackie Herring, a lot of Williams. Hannah Berry, Daniela Lewis, and Els Visser moved into the top 10. And with that, uh, second place today. This copyrighted broadcast of World Triathlon Corporation may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without express written consent of World Triathlon Corporation.